everyone. Welcome to another edition of YouTube Take. I'm your host, Big Rat J310 Crawford, here with my two guests. We got Stephen A. Ball. Yours truly, the one and only Phil Bayless. Yeah. Yes, I'm a mark for myself. Like it. We're all a mark for ourselves in some ways. That's what makes us who we are. Yes. So let's go. Let's get right here started on first take. Some very unfortunate first news happened over the weekend. YouTube one of take. The YouTube take. Most consistent. Oh shoot! God, we're becoming so second rate. Uh, well, YouTube take. Um, one of the saddest stories happened over the weekend. One of the most dominant teams of the past ten years. One of the dom- One of the most dominant players of the past sixteen years took a big hit. As uh, Ray Lewis, Ladarius Webb, and obviously from earlier this season with Terrell Suggs, are all out. Ray Lewis tore his triceps in the middle of a play, and according to reports, he wanted to get off the field, but the Cowboys ran a no huddle, so he actually had to stay on the field. Like another player or two with a torn tricep, which it's got to suck, and that just tells you how tough Ray Lewis is. And he's gone, and now the question becomes, what's left of the Baltimore Ravens losing three guys like that? Uh, Marquise, start us off. Um, the Ravens are finished, and it hurts them for me. To, like I thought that even minus Suggs, minus even Webb, I thought I still had them. To be honest with you, I still had them in this year's Super Bowl. Like, even with all that's going, all that going on, they're done now. Because even though Ray Lewis is still, he's lost a step. Obviously, he's not you know 2005 Ray Lewis. He's still one of the top five players in his position, and not only that, but in the locker room. You know, he's clearly the leader of that team. Been the leader of that franchise since he got drafted. So I think just the emotional hit will be too much for the Ravens. And to be honest with you, I'm not even sure if they make the playoffs now. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's a that is a that's a that's a huge statement, um, Marquine. But no, I don't think right now anyone uh, can argue with that. Um, Ray Lewis. I don't like the Ravens. I've never liked the Ravens. It's just how it, how it works, you know, being a Patriot fan or whatever. I just feel like all our games come down to freaking flags. But under, other, outside of that, uh, Ray Lewis has just been – he's still been one of my favorite players to ever play the game. The guy, you know, if you guys don't know, I'm very, you know, I'm very, you know, I wouldn't say religious, but, I'm, I'll, you know, I believe in God. You know, I love just, Jesus. Just say spiritual. Like spiritual. Spiritual is the right word. Okay, spiritual is the right word. I'm very spiritual. So is Ray Lewis. He inspires me uh, as much as you know as anyone else that is the same way, and I just think that that presence on the field is like no other for that team. And they haven't. When was the last time? And and Big Rat, maybe you can look this up while we're talking. When was the last time Ray Lewis did not play for the Ravens? Um, I know he got hurt. I think a couple years ago and missed a couple games. So I don't know how they finished. But like I said, Big I Rat. Think, I think as a serious injury like this, I know he like he hurt his ankle like his second year in the NFL. But yeah, here I'll, I'll look he, it up. To and see he also got hurt when he was on the Madden cover in 05. Yes. Yeah. So that's the one. Due I'm to thinking. the nature of the curse. Right. So I mean, that's the one I'm thinking of. So maybe <laughs> see see what the Ravens did then. But anyways, I digress. What I'm saying is, I I, I agree with Markeem. as far as what the AFC is. This is gonna, it's going to be harder now for the Ravens to make the playoffs because I think that the AFC. Not that I'm saying the AFC is stacked. I believe the NFC is stacked. But I do think the AFC is more competitive. Um, I know people, you know, have have their their case about that, but I'm just saying I think it's more competitive, and I think the Ravens are, are not going to be that guaranteed number one seed. I think because they beat the Patriots, uh, all they had to do is go and beat the Texans, and uh, they were they had the number one they had the number one seed. Now I don't know if that's the case. Um, I don't know even if they beat the Texans if that's they're going to have that number one seed because I don't even well we'll get to that game, but I just think Ray Lewis is is he's an integral part if not the 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 main part of that defense. I think. You know, people can make the argument you could lose Flacco and the team would be different. But I, I, I mean, would still be okay. But I, which is a huge statement in itself. But I, I think Ray Lewis losing Ray Lewis has to put them at a low playoff spot, if that. Uh, me personally, if I could just chime in very quickly, um, I still think the Ravens will make the playoffs, and that's just because of how how poor the the AFC is. I mean, look at the Steelers; they're really struggling. Like, and I just I. As good as the Bengals are, I don't see them winning the division. Like, you know, the Ravens, their offense has gotten a lot better. Joe Flacco has really turned into that elite quarterback that they wanted when they drafted him. I'm still, if this was any other year, if this was like two, three years ago, I would say they wouldn't. But because Ray Lewis has gotten older and because Joe Flacco, like I said, has gotten a lot better, I still think they'll make the playoffs. But I agree, man. Like, I don't, I don't see them. Honestly, I don't see them winning in the playoffs. I could say that much. I don't see them getting past that. 
It's very I unfortunate. Say, I will say this. I'll add this to it. I just I forgot that I didn't say this. I will say this. This change not only changes the Ravens. This changes the AFC. Um, yeah, I yes. would I wouldn't have. We'll get to this in a minute. I don't know if this, I can't remember if this is the next topic, but um, the Patriots being the number one seed is now a possibility. Where before I thought that oh. if the Ravens beat them, it's not. So well, you know, go ahead. How can they be the number one seed if they won't even beat the Dolphins for the division? Oh shut, shut up. up, kid. <laughs> <laughs> All, all right, right, all right. Let's move on. The next topic actually is going back to Ray Lewis a little bit. Um, it is written here, is Ray Lewis the greatest leader of all time? But I think George Washington, Abraham Lincoln. In sports. In sports. In sports. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Is Ray Lewis the greatest leader of all time in sports? Um, my Phil, Phil, start us off. In sp- uh, I- Phil. I, I heard, I'm here. I'm here. Um, is the is he the greatest leader in all of all, all of sports? I think that's maybe even stretching it. But as far as football and the NFL, you if you don't say he's one of, I'm not saying you have to put him one or two or three or whatever. But I'm saying you can't if you can't put him in that category, you're you're just chipping the man. You're 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 underrating him. He was definitely he's definitely for his time. Um, was is is up there. Um, is he all time greatest? No, I'm not saying that, but. I think he is in, up in the argument, and if you can't put him in the discussion, then you obviously don't watch Ravens games. That's what I'm saying. Go ahead, Martin. Um, um, are we talking about just players? Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's what I would think. Are we talking about coaches, Coach K? No, not coaches. Ahead, not coaches. Not um, coaches. Okay. But are we saying is he one of the? Is this the question? No, is he is he the greatest? The he greatest? Great. No, then I would say no. He's not the greatest. No. Um. Minus Wayne Gretzky, I would say yes. Because for as great as someone like Michael Jordan was, a lot of people said that, you know, he wasn't as vocal. You know what I mean? He, at halftime, the Bulls were losing. He wouldn't get up, and it wouldn't be Michael Jordan's speech that uplifts them, you know what I mean, and causes them to play better. Um, all I know is that oh, – I'll give you all an example. At the NIT this year, well, this past season, uh, Stanford was in the NIT, the Stanford men. And uh, they were in they were in in Madison Square Garden. They were losing at halftime. Uh, Ray Lewis actually went in their locker room and gave them a speech, and they won by fifteen points. <laughs> so this is this is basketball, you know what I mean? So I, I I it's hard for me to say he's not. You know, if he can do that to for a bunch of kids, he don't even know. He don't even know these kids. He don't know. Him. He was just in the arena as a fan. He wanted to talk to him. That's what happened. And then, and was like, I don't mean he was that. Like, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I don't want to interrupt. I just want to say to that point before I forget that what defines a great leader to me and in, in sports or in anything is they can do it regardless of who they're around. They can they lead regardless. They don't just lead a bunch of you know guys off the street and then they can't lead good guys or they can lead great te- teammates but they can't lead bad team. I mean Ray Lewis has can lead anything and like you said he led a Stanford team to go out there. You know, he, or he was able to motivate a guy. You know, he's definitely one of the greatest motivators, which I think comes along with leaders. So that's just what else. You know. yeah, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, but th- like he, you know, just for him to be able to just say, hey, y'all listen to me. All right. You know, y- y'all need to do this because, you know, this this is all y'all got. You know, y- 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 I, it's the, y'all got to look up the speech. It's, a, it's incredible. But um, and they went out there and they won by 15. They won the Super Bowl. In the year 2000, because this man was on the field, I know that defense was one of the best ever put together. But you you take you take they were number one number one in rushing, number one in passing, number one in points, and it wasn't close. But I think if you take Ray Lewis off that team in the year 2000, they're like half of that because he was like he not only was that, but he had his hand in everything that went on for the defense. You know what I mean? That defense is old now. I mean, that's just being real. They're old now. Minus, like, a few players in there, they're old defense. But people still fear the Ravens because of just the, 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 um, what is it, the, uh, the aura and the, respect that, and the respect that they have because of Ray Lewis. Like, the identity of the Ravens defense is that we will hurt you. And that's because Ray Lewis is the face of that D. He's the face of that organization. And any great thing that they have done, they've been they've been so consistent through the years. And the one common thing, whether it be they had they had niggas like Kyle Bowler throwing the ball <laughs> and Trent Dilfer, you know, Trent, Trent Dilfer, Jamal Lewis was their running back. You know, a few years ago, he was pretty good. Got had two thousand yards one season. And um, 
with all that being said, though, the one constant has been Ray Lewis. So I say next to Wayne Gretzky because I feel like Gretzky is an all-time leader. Ray Lewis. And and one thing I want to just kind of – And uh, I don't even watch hockey. It's just, just being real. <laughs> one thing I want to kind of add to that before we get to the next topic or whatever, but um, I just want to say, like, and I'm not saying this to bring this up, saying that as far as talent and their position, they're anywhere close. But – Ray Lewis does to a team like Tim Tebow does to a team. And I know <laughs> I know you're going to laugh. I know people are going to be like, oh, my gosh, he uh, just compared Tim God, Tebow to God. Ray Lewis. But, no, just get what I'm saying. Like, that that guy, what he did in Florida, even if you just disregard NFL, like you said, uh, I think it was last YouTube tape, you know, that guy said in an interview, we will never lose another game. And did they lose another game? They weren't even down. So, I mean, that that guy is a leader. And I'm saying that's what I'm talking about with, with, with Ray Lewis. I mean, I would make – you said Super Bowl – that year, I, I'd make the argument the Ravens don't even ever beat us, and I'm a Patriots fan. They don't ever beat us uh, in some key games, or not even close last year if it wasn't. I know Flacco's good. I'm not discrediting the Ravens. I'm just saying Ray Lewis motivates him, and I think Ray Lewis, in his, deep down and inside, hates us. So, <laughs> so I mean, I, I, that's just something that I you know wanted to add to that. And, and, and I also want to throw out there, I don't like him very much because, and it has nothing to do with him, he went to Miami. And back in the day, Virginia Tech and Miami, bitter rivals. Bitter, bitter, bitter rivals. The kid knows. I got tired of y'all niggas beating us mm-hmm. all the time. And I, I, I won't forget the I will never forget the game. Never, ever, ever forget this. We actually had a shot to win the Big East. And then we faced them in the middle of the season. And, oh, my God, Ray Lewis had 18 tackles and three and a half sacks. I was so pissed. <laughs> we, could, like, we, we couldn't get anything going because he was everywhere. He was everywhere. It was annoying. But, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, I think, and I'm not just saying this, obviously, because I'm a UM fan, and Ray Lewis is a, Ray Lewis is one of the most well-respected UM alum, and that says quite a lot if you consider the cast that has come out of that school over the past 30 years. But um, I think at the end of the day, we can all say that, without a doubt, he left an impact on the sport. And whether it's his last game, not his last game, we really don't need to get into it. But no matter what, people will remember Ray Lewis for a while to go. And I will say this. I've said some things about Ray Lewis before, you know, about how he's, he likes to complain about the refs a little bit. But let me just say this. Ray Lewis, you will be missed. This is a, a turning point in no, NFL no, no, in general. No, we, we don't know if he's retiring. Phil. Yeah, I know, no, but I just want to say, just say they're, they're saying that, that it could be a career and an injury. I just want to say give them respect to the man. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I got you. I got you. you know, I think I said, Ray uh, Lewis, you know, you're going to be missed. There's never going to be another linebacker. I mean, I've said before, Markeem says I'm stupid, but, you know, I've said at times, you know, I think he's the best linebacker ever. So, I, I think he's top three. I wouldn't say the best. I think Dick Buck is, and Lawrence Taylor are both better now. Right, right. The, uh, the question becomes, with the Ravens out, what happens with New England? Because the Patriots, for those who do not know, the Patriots just lost to the Seahawks 24-23, uh, it could seem like an upset, but I guess some people might have foreseen it coming. But uh, the question. Oh becomes, God! Shut well, up! Oh, we we're gonna go there. Where are no, we gonna no, go? No, 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 no! We, we, remember, I have to control time and shit like that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't, do, you oh, can't throw little bullshit comments wow. like that in, and then be like, I gotta control time. I got that's some skip shit right there. Let me there. say one thing. You gotta let me say one thing. I just want to say. When I make picks, they stay on YouTube take. Uh, okay, okay, all right, yeah. that's enough. All right, no, I guess now we're going to get this. I made a pick last week. Oh, my God, no. Oh, no, be quiet. Stop. Right, just stop. No, just you stop. can't do that. You can't tell me to oh, not God. get my bullet out there and then get your own bullet out there and then tell you to be quiet. I'll be quick. I'll tell the whole story. Right, you guys just don't respond. Right, no, just I'll quick. tell the facts. I'll tell the facts. Last week on YouTube tape, I downplayed the Patriots and upplayed the Seahawks big time. I said it was very possible to actually win the game. But at the end of the day, I picked the Patriots out of blind faith. Then the very next day, I changed my prediction. I told every, all of my friends in Miami that the Seahawks were going to win, and they did. And Phil's mad at me because I didn't stick by my pick on YouTube take, which is a fair assessment. All right? And now we're moving on. Okay? Thank you. Um, the question now becomes, can the Patriots win big games with this defense? The last – Time the Patriots blew a double-digit fourth-quarter lead, week 17, 2009. I believe that was the game that Wes Walker got hurt, if I remember correctly. This is yeah, the week before you got guys. got better memory than me. I, I don't remember. <laughs> this was the week before they got destroyed by the Ravens in the playoffs. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was very suspect. They, they blatantly just allowed Russell Wilson to just fucking throw that game-winning touchdown. It was ridiculous how open Sidney Rice got. And, uh, yeah, so, Phil, we'll go to you being a fan. Can yes. they do it? 
Okay, um, I just want to foresee this. Uh, I apologize for any love that you hear, but <laughs> I'm being, I have been told I can unleash on my Patriots, so yeah, be warned. Um, you've been warned. All right. Nice, but anyways, nice, nice job using the word unleash, Philip Bayless. <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> unleash him. Let him play. Very good. Uh, yeah. Let him play. <laughs> anyway, okay. So here's the deal. All right, I said on this game, on on this uh podcast or whatever you want to call it, you know that I thought the game would be close. I was concerned with the travel. Um, and then of course what happened in the game, I'm oh, just, I'm just frustrated with, um, I don't ever get, I never rarely get mad at, at the Patriots or, or rarely get mad at, at Bill Belichick and his decision and stuff like that. I'm just a loyal fan, you know, sue me if you don't like that kind of fan. I mean, I just, that's how I am, but, um, it's the Patriot way if you guys want to say, but, um, but anyways, so like, I, you know, I have a theory about that. I'll wait till you get done talking. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. But like, so, um. Uh, what was I gonna say? Okay, so 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 the Seattle game happened. Um, my theory going into this game, I said this before, and I kind of got even further. And I, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, I did lash out on this a little bit. But um, I said this, and I said with the way that our defense plays, if we're not, and I didn't really word it this way on Twitter, but I'm wording it this way now. Um, I said if this defense does not, it's not up by more than 14 points in the fourth quarter. I didn't, I don't want to. I mean, I could probably say like a certain amount of minutes. But if this team is not up by more than 14 points in this, uh, in the fourth quarter, and if the, uh, if Tom, Br- I honestly think that offense has to play nonstop, almost perfect list or perfect, uh, no mistake, uh, football. If they don't do that and they're only up by 14 or so, this team can lose. And I'm, this pains me to say this, this team can lose to just about. I'm gonna say just about because there are some really easy games. Just about anybody. Um, they're not losing to the Jets. If they lose to the Jets, I will come on here and scream, "Hallelujah, go Rex Ryan!" Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was, I'm put it on the record. That. What's the I'm, record? Actually, that's going to be on Phil's okay. record. Okay, you can put put me on the record. I'm going to go ahead and say this now. If the Patriots lose, I don't care if it's by one point. I don't care if it's somehow they lose by half a point. If the Patriots lose to the Jets this Sunday, I will do. Anything you want me to do on on this podcast, say anything you want me to say, put it on record. You get to choose what I say if they lose to the Jets because that will be ridiculous. I'm about to go off. Put put I'm that a, in the comments. Hey y'all, put that in the comments. What would you want? What would you yes. want me to say? What do you want and to say? by the way, I'm not going to say anything uh, that's offensive. So don't even start saying that. Uh, I'm just going to get. Let it be sports related. Yes, I'm yeah, like, let it be sport. Don't let it be. I'm like, gay. Like, like really? Like, I don't do that. <laughs> yeah, you really want me to say I'm gay? Let, don't let it be like that. Okay. Anyways, about that game, and we'll get to that game. So I'm gonna save that for look for later, just to keep us on topic about the Patriots. I just think, I think, and it's hard for me to say. It's hard for me to to back this up, but I think that the Patriots defense is better this year. Um, they're not. They are horrible against the pass, but this team can finally stop the run more than it did last year. They're six overall in, in opposing rushing, uh, allowing opposing rushing yards of 82.7, and yes, I'm not trying to be smart. I actually know this, but I'm just saying, like, they know how to stop the run. Chandler Jones, you know, Hightower when he plays, Mayo, they have players that can stop the run. Vince Wilford, like, the greatest guy, like, he's been there for So to say that, you know, that this is going to stop the anything from from you know from happening uh i don't know what i was gonna say but anyways hold on uh yeah and i and i just think that with this team you know i I was talking about the jets and the patriots but i i just to talk about overall i think this team is going to be fine i don't is this a it's just different i mean there's teams that have to go through transitions there's teams that have to go through changes i mean could you would you say before the season the Patriots were going to have two hundred yard rushers in one game? I would have told you you're crazy. <laughs> I mean, I would have told you, are you serious? Would I mean I love the Patriots and I don't talk bad about them, but I'm just thinking a little realistically, and I'm like that hasn't happened since I think I'm, they might have looked this up. I didn't save this, but um, since like 1980 something. So I mean, it's been a long time, or maybe it was 90 something. I don't know. Anyways, it was, probably, it was probably Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon yeah, had like a 297 think, rushing yard game one time. Yeah, but 200 yard rushers though. Not two, two, 296. I remember. What now? 296. I remember. 296. Uh, the 200 yard rushers, I don't remember. But just move on. Right. But anyways, what I'm saying is they don't rush the ball. I mean, they passed like crazy last year. But the thing I want to say about the defense, you know, try to keep myself a little bit short because, like I said, I can ramble on and on. But um, the defense, uh, the cornerbacks, I think, is the biggest problem. 
uh, it's been a, since Asante Samuel that we haven't had a legit cornerback. Not to mention in this game that people want to forget, but Patrick Chung went down in this game, um, and that is huge because I, he's what I feel like is the only guy that can play pass defense. Devin McCourty is good. I don't. He's a great man-to-man guy, but he doesn't play the ball. Um, people that don't watch the watch the Patriots don't realize that he's a good cornerback, but he is. He just doesn't play the ball, so pass interference is called all the time on him. So uh, message to McCourty: play the ball. <laughs> but anyways, um, I just think I don't think this team has any worries. But like I said, you know, it's teams that can put up the ball, and I'm gonna say this, and and, Mar- and Big Rat's gonna, you know, crap in his pants or pee in his pants, or whatever. If teams like Miami, Miami has some some talent on that offense. Indianapolis, Andrew Luck, you know, Reggie Wayne, um, you know, Houston, teams like that, San Fran, that have offensive players. Now, Buffalo, if no, you know, that was a first half fluke. You know, Tom Brady's like, okay, let me play now. And, and he lit them up, so no. Um, and all you, and it, first of all, turnovers was the reason that game was even close early, but you can make argument on, on both sides with the turnovers. But what I'm saying is the Patriots aren't, they're fine. But there is question marks on defense, but there was question marks last year and what happened. We went to the Super Bowl like I said we would. Uh, Anyways. Um, <laughs> like I said. Unimpressive. But, unimpressive. Like Easy said, AFC. Shut the fuck oh, up. Good. Oh, good. Oh, but it's sorry, still, it's sorry, still, sorry. It's still I'll edit that out. I'll edit that out. I'll edit that out. I'll edit that out. No, 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 no that's, leave that in. That's fine. I'm just saying what I think is, yes, it's, it was an easy – you know, an easy schedule, but the fact is people are still not picking the Patriots. So you can't say it was easy when you still had the Patriots losing. Like, you can't say it was easy when the Patriots end up winning. Like, no, you have to stick with what you're doing. Beating zero teams above 500. That's all I'm going to say. beat the Ravens in the AFC Championship. Don't get crazy. They shouldn't have. That's all well, I'm they, they, well, they quote unquote beat the Ravens, and it, but it happened. No, you no, can't no, take no, that away no, from no, them. It happened. Cool. If we're gonna go there, I'll, I'll talk about that. People forget no, no, that the no, no, Patriots. No, 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 no. Let me finish. That the no, Patriots I'm, had the lead in that game. Had the lead in that game, and what did Brady do? Oh, I feel like I can get a touchdown here. Launch it in the middle of the air like hail mary, and it picked off. If they don't do that, they get a first down. The game is over, people. So get right, over this right. field goal. I'm we got to get back on topic. No, no, no. This is my job. This is hey, 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 no, no, no. no I'm done. Kid, I'm done with kid. saying anything. No, 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 no. Phil, kid, stop. Um, th- th- There's a reason why the kid has been so, and I did. Yeah, that's right. Y'all about to get a rant. I'm about to rant on the fan, okay? Anybody that says we get off topic, oh, we, we should stay, don't watch the shit. Simple as that. I'm, I'm telling you not to watch the shit. Don't disrupt our flow because you have a minor complaint about what we do. Shut the fuck up. Seriously. Like, like when that said, like, it, it, I was waiting. I was waiting for us to start recording so I can say that. Like, first take is two hours every day. It's two hours every day. If you don't want to listen to us, you know what I mean? We're like, we're the indie first take. Fuck you. We don't need your view. Simple as that. Fuck you. Wow. Seriously. Wow. <laughs> good I'm job. done. That's a good I don't, and, and, and anyone that's ever said that, fuck you. For real. <laughs> well, <laughs> anyways, but like I said, I'll kind of close up the, the whole Patriot argument, but I agree with Markeem too. Like, we get off topic, but listen, dude. Skip Bayless talks about random stuff, so just and it's my thing is you can listen to that to a podcast of Wrestling Observer, as much as I love wrestling, or if you can watch listen to podcasts about fantasy football, you can listen to us. And if you can't, don't have you ever listened to those fantasy football? Pro- them shits are the worst. Them shits uh, are so boring. Like opinion. this guy got twenty points last week. What? what? No, I don't this want to watch. And the thing is, this is who you should start. But yet, let me talk about Darth Vader, some random guy. <laughs> Some people all that I watch that is, podcast will know what I just talked about. But anyway. all I know is Skip Bayless. I I heard Skip Bayless when talking about Blake Griffin talk about the supremacy of the white race and how all white people <laughs> should be happy. Anyways, all right. All, all I'm saying is that they're popular because people don't disrupt their flow. Don't try and disrupt our flow. Just don't listen. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> Serious. All right. Well, I like I said, I agree with Marquinhos outside of the 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 screw you part. But anyways. So, uh, no, 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 Phil said it. You know right. you want to. All right, fine. Fuck. Screw you. Fuck. Screw you, fans. That's, that's right. Screw you, Shit. Fans. Except for the three that uh, backed me up on Reggie Wayne. I love you. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, Just let me close off, close off on this with the Patriots. I still think – I think now, as of this moment, you can put me on record. Um, I don't know if it's really something you can put me on record for, but make the decision yourself. I think the Patriots right now are the best team in the AFC now. Uh, you couldn't say – you cannot say Hilarious. that argument. Fuck. You could not mm. – sh- you could not say that argument because they lost to the Ravens with Ray Lewis. Now, how can you not? When they've beaten Denver and Ravens are a different team. 
They so lost Houston, to two. Texas, the Houston Texans are just non-existent in this. They lost. They got creamed by the Packers. I think that was more of Aaron Rodgers on a fucking no, rampage. No, no, that was, guess what? That, that, well, that, that is true. Guess Aaron Rodgers Houston, was pissed. He was, but guess what, Houston? Phil, welcome to, Phil, it. Phil, welcome Phil. to the can't NFL. Lose, you can't lose, you can't use the argument because Team A beat Team B and Team B yeah, beat yeah, Team foot, C. Yeah, yeah, football just don't work like that. Okay, well, that's yeah, true. I'm not, okay, Seahawks, true. I'm not, but well, listen, though, you brought no, it up. No, I'm not no, saying I got, it. I got one for you. The Seahawks lost to the Rams, and the Rams lost to us. So by your logic, we're better than the Seahawks. Not my logic. You were saying you brought up the game, so I brought up the game. I'm not saying that we're better than Houston because they lost to the Green Bay. Don't get, oh, don't twist my. What, what, what are you saying that you can I'm make the saying, argument for the Patriots? Right, that that's saying? what I'm saying. And I'm saying oh, I, okay, okay. That, the Houston, okay. that Houston has now played a team and lost. That's what I'm saying. Oh, because of oh, all the teams, all the teams that the Patriots have played over eight that they've lost to Cardinals, fucking Seahawks, fucking Ravens. Okay, and, okay. They, they now, beat, can, they, can I speak on this topic? Because they, they beat are, Denver. Now, go ahead. Go ahead. But they beat Denver, but no one cares. But go ahead. Um, the the thing, the reason why this is even an issue, um, minus the Super Bowl seasons, t- uh, Bill Belichick has always had a bad defense. I don't know why, but that's just kind of been the case. The one thing is that <laughs> in the red zone. They were one of the best in the league, yep. and that is and that is not the case this year. It's alarming because they're giving up points, and before they wouldn't do that, they give up a ton of yards. But when it got in that red zone area, That's right. you wasn't gonna, you wasn't gonna score touchdowns. You know what I mean? And that was that was their mo. Now they're giving up touchdowns. Do I think they can win this way? No, not 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 if not if it's like this. Not if they're if they're giving up points in the red zone. I don't think they can win. Well, no one I can think, win that way. I agree. No one can like, win that way. Right? Well, 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 yeah, but like. I think that uh, come playoff time, if that's the case, we won't see them for long. Like I really, I really believe they will lose quick if that's the case. Like if they play, if they play the Texans, especially with JJ Watt knocking motherfuckers around and them giving up points in the red zone, it won't, it won't be long. I will agree. <laughs> I agree. This is, this is what I said before. Well, I didn't want you to cut you off, cut you off, but I wanted to say this. I just remember. Go ahead. Um, I said I, I kind of said to myself I didn't put it on record, so I'm not going to try to you know stick to it, but. I did say to myself that I said, legit, legitimately, if we can get past Seattle, the next losable game, honestly, and I, and I know that it's a rivalry game, we could lose to Miami, but the next losable game as far as tough matchup would be Houston, which would give us if we had beat Seattle, but we didn't. So it would have been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven straight wins into our tough matchups against the Texans and 49ers back-to-back. So now that we lost to Seattle, I can't say that because – we lost to Seattle. I'm not saying Seattle's a bad team. And another thing I want to go off on, just real quick, is the Seattle player that decided to talk his smack. I understand. Oh, what an idiot. I understand. A- Seattle, I understand you're not talked about. I understand that. You have a reason to be a chip on your shoulder. But guess what? Keep it on the field. Don't stay out of, out of the field. Because guess what? If you somehow make it to the Super Bowl, you will get creamed. Just letting you know. Uh, oh, you think Tom Brady is going to go Tom nuts? Brady has done it before. Ryan Clark. Just all I'm saying. But 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 see, okay, here here's the difference though. This is one of the most overrated corners in the game, by the way. True. But um <laughs> uh here, here's the thing though. Seattle probably has the best secondary in the game. Like I, I, I no, like, I'm not knocking him. Don't get me wrong. Best, I'm not knocking him. Possibly the best That's, overall defense. Yeah, right, and pos- I'm not, let me so, just say that. I'm not knocking this guy. Because I understand he should be mad because they're not talking about Seattle. Just keep it on the field. You can talk about Tom Tom Brady's face all you want when the game's happening, but don't come to him after the game. Like really? How y'all such a great team? Because, y'all, y'all three and oh, three. That's thing. Three just, and three. It was like Bart Scott. Can't wait. Can't wait. Yeah, Bart. Sorry, I can't wait for your relevant again. Um, but I would do want to say this uh, about that about the team thing. That was another thing. I'm glad you said that. He said, you know, why? How are y'all such a great team? Um, Seattle. Do you know what? It, like, uh, it's like that y'all are the Brady bunch. Um, the Patriots are more of a team than any team in the league, and I will say that with utmost confidence because that team plays. Based on their team, they don't talk about each other because it's not the Patriot way, and I know Marquine wants to go off on that. But I'm just saying, that team, in my opinion, is the most team or could be and arguably the most you, team. You, you mean in terms of like teams that are relevant at the moment? Because the, the most close-knit team is clearly the Saints. It's clearly the Saints. Well, but, yeah, I mean, they, but they I'm suck. Talking, right. <laughs> relevant. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's true. You know, right, Drew Brees. Um, you know, Drew Brees wants to kill Roger Goodell. So, right. You know. <laughs> as um, as far as the Patriots thing goes, um, I'm sorry, but I've been saying it for the past two years, and right now they're not proving me wrong. They still have yet to beat a good team, a, a great team. I mean, 
Come on, they've only played three teams oh. this year. In, that in, people in, would... in the hold on, hold on. Oh, Specify in the regular season. Yeah, in Specify. the regular season. <laughs> Phil, 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 but just like look at this shit. I mean, come on. The regular season, Phil? I totally agree with you, but you're 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 not saying right. that. You say regular right. season. Oh, I no, but I, I have a point. I have a point. Listen, they could look, they played three caliber teams this season. Four. Okay, I'll give I'll give them the Broncos win. Although I've always said and always will say that I think Tom Brady will always beat the Broncos with that defense because his offensive style just completely confuses them. And that's why I always think he's gonna put up 30, 40 points. And if Peyton Manning doesn't put up 30, 40 points on the other side, they don't have a chance. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. If they if they not getting to if they not getting to Brady, their corners just sit out there on the island. Brady's gonna kill yeah. that all day. Well, he, <laughs> well I wanna say wait, hold, wait, on, wait, no, one, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just, I'm not, this is a little input too, and we can talk about this later, but I just want to say, I I also don't agree with the fact that Brady becomes some, like, mediocre quarterback when he's rushed, because if you didn't watch the Super Bowl when the Giants rushed him, that dude, that fool got back up after getting his arm yanked beside him, okay, so that guy, he, when being rushed, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that argument about, but, but, but but that's, that's the only reason the Giants are able to consistently beat him, though. That's true, I'm not saying he's not, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying he's not the same quarterback because he's not Brady when he's doing it, but I don't think he drops down to Gus Farad, which I know you were joking. No, I was joking about that. I know you were joking, but I'm saying I still think he's better than anybody else in the league outside of the you know the, your core top five that we always talk about. Um, all right, yeah. fine. We'll put that to the side for now. But the thing is, they've played they've played six teams, four of which were top quality, and the other three games, the Cardinals, the Seahawks, and the fucking Ravens, they lost all three. I don't care if all three were decided by a point or less. This team still cannot consistently beat top competition. And because of that, I can never call them the best team in the AFC until they consistently beat top competition. And now, to be fair, to be fair, the Texans haven't either because the Texans have only really played the Broncos. But the Texans also haven't had the opportunity to consistently play top, top, top competition like the Patriots have. And because of that, it's more fair. It's fairer to say the Texans had this edge than the Patriots do. I'm sorry. And until, like I said, until the Patriots can prove me otherwise, then I shall not believe it. And this season isn't a great season to prove me wrong because they have – I'm a part of this division. Right. I understand how pretty simple this, this schedule is. All they really have is that Texans and that 49ers game but, but, left but in kid, front of them. Kid, kid are, you, are you saying it's like inarguable? And you can say, that, I mean, you can argue that, kid. Yeah, you can. Like, you know, right. everybody, everybody has problems. Like, every team in the AFC has a, a legit problem with them. The Texans have no more right. Brian Cushing. You know I mean, that's fair, but I just, one team's three and three, the other team's five and one. Well, and, yeah, I feel, I feel you. I feel I, you. And no, I and to be honest, I actually, I mean, everything you said make it makes sense. You can't argue that. I understand that. But I, I mean, and that's fine that you, with that argument, with what you just said, I'm totally fine with you saying the Patriots aren't number one because everything you said makes perfect sense. I just don't. I just have them as my number one, and that's fine. All right, All right. that's fair. But they can't be number one when they're not even going to win the AFC East this year. Oh, he did again. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. I, I, right. I'm just saying that the AFC is wide open. Right. To me, there is no. It difference. is. And to be honest, I don't even know. I love their schedule, but I would even go out and say I don't know if the Patriots do uh, get the number one seed. I just don't know. So. We'll have to wait and see. We'll, we'll talk more about this like in the yeah, coming yeah. weeks. This, when it, this, is a, this is a long yeah, and, mostly, I, and mostly meaningless NFL right. season. Oh, so. a little jab for the week. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> you know, you see, I knew that Freudian slip was apparent. For those who do not know, this this won't be on the record because we had to delete that recording. But before we started recording YouTube Take today, um, Markeem introduced himself, and he introduced himself as uh, Mark <laughs> Nightmare Bayless. <laughs> Nightmare Bayless. <laughs> and he was like, whoa, shoot, no, I can't say that. And then, thankfully, to his savior, Phil hadn't recorded yet. But just so you guys know... This man has the same same tactics. You can't be dropping that the NFL is meaningless and then expect us to move on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I told college bowl games suck, and we're done. All right. hey, actually, actually, they don't. But go ahead. That's just you. Right. That is you feel. Go it's, ahead. My point is, it's still a little too early to talk about the playoff picture. I mean, we're in week six. We oh, still got days to go. Can, can I say something real quick about the playoff picture? What? Outside of Monday night's game, because this it might have changed, and I can look at it and just make sure. But if the playoffs ended on Sunday after the Sunday night game, guess who makes the playoffs? The Bills and the Dolphins. Oh my God! <laughs> Wait, that's how crazy the AFC is, and I, and I know I have proof because uh, if you need proof, I will link it to you. But 
how the hell do we get to the playoffs ahead of the Jets? They have the same record and they have a win over us. It's uh, you, it's uh, hold on, let me see, let me look, let's see, it's right here. If, if you told me Dolphins and Bills, I Dolphins and Jets, I could understand. Hold on, let's see. No, it was Dolphins and as of right now, well now it's changed, but well now they got the. Uh, well, maybe I misread it, but I know Buffalo was in that, and maybe the other team was a different team. But anyways, so so Buffalo was it still it was still one of them. Now it's changed because San Diego and Denver, but um, maybe that was before. I don't oh, know. that's probably why. Yeah, they yeah. had Denver losing. Yeah, Denver. Lo- yeah. So, okay. So. All right. Um, basically, now let's uh, let's move on to a team we were talking hey, hold, about. Hold on, hold on, time out. And we were all off topic, motherfuckers. Yeah, all please. off topic. Yep. Y'all ain't like to kiss my ass. Now, go ahead, kid. <laughs> uh, oh, for I those that don't, <laughs> apparently, um, I probably should have explained this to to explain this unnecessary rant. Uh, Markeem got a message on. Uh, oh no, Phil got a message from someone saying that he likes no, the I show. Got, no, people told me, but I think Markeem actually got the message. Right? Yeah, I got yeah. a message. People told Phil that he doesn't like the sh- They don't like the show because we get too off topic. And someone messaged Markeem that the show is too long. So, this. Angered together now, Markeem. One, two, three. Screw Fuck you. <laughs> Close enough. Anyways, now let's get to now this. You will stuff. never get that on uh, first take, so eat it. Now we go back to let's go back to the Texans. Are the Texans gonna have the one man down effect and suck for the rest of the season via Cushing? Uh, I'll let Phil start us off here. Okay. Um. Will they have the one man down effect? I, I think Kevin is the one that sent this question. And I'll give him a little shout out. But um, props to Kevin. Props to Kevin for sending this in. Thank you for sending anybody. Follow our twitters. I think Mark, uh, Big Rat usually puts them in the link. Follow our twitters because we usually ask for topics. This not just we don't just want to think of topics for ourselves. We do care about our fans and we do hate the ones that hate us. So hate is hate, <laughs> love is love. Anyways, um, but get back to the point. Are the Texans going to have a one-man down season? As we know, last season they lost to Matt, they lost Matt Schwab, and they were a totally another team. I said before losing Matt Schwab, the Texans were the only team I feared. Once when Matt Schwab came down, I don't, I'm not happy about injuries, but I did a little sigh of relief. Like whew, the one team I scared is I'm scared of is is not irrelevant anymore. But they, did, they still won a game, didn't they? Didn't the Texans win, still win a game? They they won like they won like three they beat of the Bengals, their next right? five. Oh no, I'm talking about the playoffs. Then they won beat the yeah, Bengals. Yeah, beat the Bengals. They, hold on, didn't they? They beat the, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. You're right because yeah. they, they played beat the Bengals the, and then they played played the they Ravens. Almost, they right. almost beat the Ravens. They lost yeah. by a touchdown. Jacoby Jones fumbled in the end zone. Right, and so to that point, I do not think that this team is done. I'm not saying that, but they're getting into the tough. And, and maybe you can say the argument. I'm not. I don't agree with you, but you can say the argument that the reason why they lost to the Packers were the Packers were pissed. One and two, you can make the argument that um that. Cushing is wasn't that big of a deal of a loss, but or, I mean not that you can make the argument that uh, Brian Cushing not being there their first game you know they had some hiccups so you could say that so do I think the Texans are done and uh, or suck for the rest of the season for uh, via Cushing no the Texans will make the playoffs could be easily uh, one through three seed well easily will be maybe fourth I don't know but easily in my opinion one through three seed. Um, in the playoffs, so I don't think they're gonna suck because of Cushing going down, but they're gonna suffer, and I think they proved that uh, in the Packers game. Am I, am I going now? Yeah, you're yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'll tell you why the Packers rushed for 99 yards because <laughs> Brian Cushing wasn't there. They can't run the ball. When did they ever run the ball? That that's, that will never happen again. That, put me on the record for that shit. They that's will true. not. They will not rush for more than 80 yards in a game for the rest of the season. Put, put me on the down. record for that. Write it, Write it down. down. I agree. I, I you can down. put my name. You can sign my name beside that too, because I agree. <laughs> and uh, and that and that worries me. I don't think they're gonna suck. I think they still make the playoffs. I don't think they're the favorites to make the Super Bowl anymore. Um, I think that uh, without Cushion, they will struggle against the run, and that much was obvious. Like 90, 90, 90 plus yards for the Packers. That that just that scared me. But name, I, hey, name the Packers running back though. I, I, I have no, there. I have no fucking idea. Cedric, no. Cedric Benson. No, Cedric he didn't Benson. play. He was hurt. Oh, uh, Cobb. No, it wasn't him. James. Either, either way, who the fuck are? It was Jaquiz Rogers, I think. It was. Who, who the fuck are these people? Anyway, um. <laughs> Right, that's your point, Marquise. Right. No, nah, like, like you know, they they can't run the ball, and they ninety plus yards against the Texans, man. It, it just it, it concerns me. I don't think that without Cushing they win the Super Bowl. I do think that. And I don't it, think without him they win the Super Bowl. And there's something that with Marquise with what he said that I wanted to say about the Ravens, but I forgot. 
Um, it was it wasn't pointed out that the Ravens have actually, even without losing Ray, before they lost Ray Lewis, had been giving up more rushing yards than they ever have in history. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's some, something to look at too. So but, sorry. Um, go ahead, Marquis. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm I'm pretty much done. I think they made the playoffs. I just don't think they win the Super Bowl. Well, I never had them in the Super Bowl, so there you go. Well, I also well, I don't know who you well, had, though, Phil. Oh, yeah. I, I, is, is it that clear? Is it is, is it that clear? <laughs> I um. I did. My AFC championship game for months has been Broncos Texans. And after this weekend, the Broncos sure as hell made my claim a little more valid, especially with the Ravens going down. Um, and the Texans, I still have them going to the Super Bowl. I never had them winning the Super Bowl, but I still have them there just because of the hold AFC. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Tom, 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 Tom. I remember you told me, kid, that you had Texans and Eagles in the Super Bowl. <laughs> so are you telling me that you had the Eagles winning this year's Super Bowl? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. Insert Vic. I did not know that. Now. I, I, I'll, I'll save it. I'll, but I can't believe he said that. <laughs> Oh my God! I'll be back. I'm getting me something to drink. I'll be I'll be back. Fuck this! I'll be right back. Just go and talk, kid. Um, I was going to say that um, what you call it? The Texans are still one of the most well-rounded teams in the game. Uh, and just because the AFC is so weak, and especially with the Ravens going down with those injuries, I just it's I still am pretty confident that the Texans can still win the AFC. Uh. Just, that's just how I feel for the most part. And I still have in the Super Bowl for now. That could change. But if you all remember, I said this last week. Last week I said, hey, the Texans haven't played anybody. So when they find... All right, so basically, yes, um, with the Texans... I do think they're still one of the most well-rounded teams in the game. Y'all got to remember, they still got a top five running back, a top five receiver, a top ten quarterback. I don't care what any of y'all motherfuckers say. Uh, oh, and still... Andre Johnson's a top five receiver. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, just and, had, I had to. I'm sorry. And and it's still a great defense. I mean, they still have arguably the MVP of the league. Uh, there is but... no arguably. There's no fucking uh, arguably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's still not but winning. yes, um, there's still hope. I mean, an MVP is an MVP for a reason. The rule of thumb is if you have the on your team, you should make the playoffs. That is usually that is usually like the code in the NFL's history. If you have the MVP of the league, you should make the playoffs because that's purely like the definition of the MVP player. So I still have him in the Super Bowl. Uh, whoa, Raven- whoa, whoa. I want to say something. I, I don't. I love it, JJ Watt. I'm not taking anything from him, but I don't agree with that statement. I don't think if you put JJ Watt on any team, he makes they make the playoffs. I don't agree. I, hey, I, I don't know. I, do they, does he, he make teams, teams competitive more or more competitive, or does he make them do, twenty do, times better? Phil, Phil, do, Phil, Phil, do you know how much he hits the quarterback? Like not even the sex. You know how much he hits the quarterback? No, I mean I agree. I told, I told, I'm not. I'm like I said. I'm not taking anything away from him. But you think he, they put him on the Browns and the Browns made the playoffs? Come on, son. Hey, hey, they make. Hey, that defense is already amazing. Come on, son. Hey, if, they, if, if they if they score ten points Come a game, on, son. Throw, throw, no, seriously, you throw. No, just think about it for a second, Phil. Right. They might. They might actually make. Like they could actually do it. Think about it this way. They already don't give up that many points. They ain't got to score that much. You throw in JJ Watt. That you know. It could happen. They they wouldn't win the Super Bowl or anything. They ain't gonna set nobody's world on fire, but they can they can make the playoffs. All right, I see. I actually see your point. You made a good point there. I got you. All right. So basically, um, I still think I have a chance. As far as the Eagles go, what I do is when I make my preseason prediction, I keep it until something tells me otherwise. And honestly, I don't see the Giants winning the division this year, and I don't see the Cowboys winning the division this year. I don't and I, fuck. I oh, think whoa, whoa, when, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought when I said the Eagles were in the division, y'all both hated me. No. I no, it was, no, it was me. Oh, okay. It was right. me. <laughs> All right. I, I don't have them the, winning the Super Bowl, though, or even going. I, I really don't have a lot of evidence to prove this, but I just have a gut feeling that when the Eagles are in the playoffs, they will be like the Giants of last year, the Packers of two years ago, the Steelers of a few years ago, where they just know how to win. They just know how to get it done, and they'll be consistent enough to the point that I think he'll carry them to the Super Bowl. I'm not changing that until I see enough evidence to tell me that that can't happen. And right now I have it, so I'm keeping it. Whatever, kid. All right. What's the next topic? 
I hold on. I still have for all you listeners. My AFC Championship game is Texans Broncos. My NFC Championship game is my NFC Championship game is Eagles and Bears. I I totally mind the Eagles part, but go ahead. Okay. Well, do I need since we're already saying that? Can we go ahead and like maybe say our picks? Uh, I made a video, so yeah, 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 so they uh I made a video, so don't say that I'm going back on anything. Yeah, we're off topic, by the way. Right. (laughs) But um, this is a good this is a good thing to say because I don't know if we ever talked about it. I can't rule. But um, I did say this in my video on my channel, so if you're saying that I'm saying this now, you can eat me. Um, I have the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Call me biased, whatever. Suck it. I don't care. Uh, the Patriots in the Super Bowl beating the Bears. So. And who do you have? Uh, wait, you have uh, the Patriots winning the Super Bowl. Yeah, how, how oh, much, the Bears. Yeah. But, but like, how much? I'm uh, just curious. I don't really like saying scores. I mean, but I'm just saying. I mean, like, I'll say I don't know. You think they'll kill them? No, it'll be not with that defense. It's gonna be like seven points, maybe ten. I don't know. Okay. Okay. It all depends on Jay Cutler. If he throws more than picks, then they could kill him. But no. What? What's the? What's the? AFC, what's the? What's the AFC and NFC championship games? AFC championship game before the season, this, I had. I don't remember. I did it in the video. Let me see if I get it. Hopefully, I get this right. But I think I had Texans Patriots. I had Patriots winning to go to the Super Bowl, and then I had Bears. Um, I want to say Bears 49ers, and I had the Bears scoring the Super Bowl. Markeem, how about you? Your top four. Um. And the AFC is what I had before the season. I think I'm going to change it. Now I had Ravens in Texas with Ravens going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to change that now. <laughs> and I had uh, an NFC, believe it or not, as much as I talk shit about Atlanta, I had Atlanta and Niners, and I had Niners in the Super Bowl. And I had, 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 had the Niners winning. Mark, I had the Niners Al, winning it all. Al Markeem, I was, I was, uh, I'm, I'm shocked by that. You gave Atlanta credit. What? I mean, I mean, yeah, because I think, I think this, I think this year they'll finally win some games. You know, I think, I think this, I think this would be the season where people would be like, oh, Matt Ryan at least deserves this job. You know? Okay. Well, <laughs> well I said that from the get go, but whatever. All right. So uh, basically, I think we can all agree Texans probably going to the playoffs, probably not going to the Super Bowl, except me, who will still stick by that. Right. All right. Next topic. Uh, let's embrace debate. Oh, on YouTube one tape. more thing. And this is totally, totally, totally off topic. Actually, not really. But anyways, last time uh, Beyonce was any involved in the Super Bowl, guess who went and won? Oh, shut up. All right, go ahead, kid. <laughs> I had to pull a big rat. What kind of stat is I that? I had to pull a big rat. I had to. <laughs> that, that's not a big rat. That's a Skip Bayless. Uh, or whatever. Oh, Mr. I love my Dolphins. They're going to win the AFC. Shut up. All right. Next topic. All right. Next topic. Uh, Broncos first half versus second half and Peyton Manning. For y'all that don't know, giving you a little Jay Crawford history here, on Monday night, the, Bron- the Broncos were down 24 to nothing at halftime. And then they came back and won 35 to 24 with 35 unanswered points in the second half with Peyton Manning throwing four touchdowns, which is pretty insane. But uh, yeah, basically now we want to talk about about how their first half performance compares with their second and Peyton. If y'all remember on Monday night against Atlanta a few weeks ago, um, they Peyton Manning threw three interceptions in the first half and got him down twenty one by twenty one points, and then he made a comeback in the fourth quarter. Still wasn't able to win, but they made it close. Same thing with New England. So, yeah, and the thing with New England as well, uh, where they were just getting murdered. And Peyton again, he made, I don't think he made it close. He made it respectable. Right. Um, so basically, oh, and for y'all that don't know, the Broncos. I haven't looked at the schedule, but I believe. I was told at the start of the season that the Broncos had the most Monday night game. The Broncos had the most Monday night games because of Tim Tebow. But since Tim Tebow isn't with them now, it's because of Peyton Manning, which is a, is a very nice thing. So basically, uh, Markeem, start us off with the Broncos' performances. Phil, did you find that stat? I have them both. you want me to say that first? Yeah, yeah give, give me the stat. Okay, here's the stat. All right, there are two stats, actually. The first one, the biggest halftime deficit Peyton Manning has ever overcome is 21 points. The Broncos, as Big Red have already said, trailed by 24 at the half on Monday Night Football. The second stat, which people on this take will think that I drug this out of my butt, but no, 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 no. This is a true, true stat. Look it up, folks. This season, Denver is being outscored. This was before last night's game, which means it's even worse. This season, Denver's being outscored uh, 98-42 to in the freaks in first half. And outscoring their opponents, how much? 93-40 to in the second half. Go, wow. so, Marquine. That's quite... That is, that is crazy. Like, the second half, Denver Broncos is the best team in football. Seriously. Like, like I'm not even joking. Second half, Denver Broncos, best team in the league. 
If we can get that for two halves, they they some bad mo- some bad motherfuckers. I tell you that. I I just think that I think that'll happen as the season goes along. I think it's just kind of um, you know, I think it's just kind of like halftime adjustments. To be honest with you, like from you know just the defense and Peyton Manning. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the more accustomed he gets to his teammates and and, and game time situations, they're gonna be scoring the entire game. So I think by the end of the season, they will be deadly. Yeah, I mean, so but I but this is a problem. Like you can't you can't rely on this man being, uh, you know, all time great at, at every second half. You know, and like is this enough for us to win? No, and the defense has to play like they do every second half in the first half. So, and and you know to to say my thoughts on the thing, I, I Peyton Manning, dude. If you have anyone that says that man, <laughs> anyone that said, and you are talking about a guy that during the era of the Patriots, uh. Colts rivalry in quotations, depending on how you feel about it. Some people don't. Some people say it is, and that's not me saying it's not a rivalry. I'm just saying. Um, that's me saying it's not a rivalry when the Patriots beat them more times than not when it fucking matters. Man, that's so man, that's how, good. How, how is it a rivalry when they win when it matters? Right. Well, 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 uh, it was that, nice. it was yeah, twice. but that post post 2005 that changed. Yeah, I, but they, I, they're I, still. But they, if you didn't see the stat again, I know the stat because I. have of course, watch Patriots games. Patriots Broncos stat the, uh, game. They said this. Uh, Tom Brady after that win, it was, it was nine and four against Peyton Manning. You know when those four came? Uh, All after two thousand five. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's like that I goes said, to what yeah. Two thousand five. Right. That goes to what you're saying. So I think I don't know what they're. So post two thousand five, the record might be different. I, I, most of the time, most of the time, the, the Patriots whoop their ass. Right. And we'll the re- right. And the reason so just to go off on that. Oh, we're going off topic again. Suck it. Um, rivalry. The reason why you could say it's not a, or why it said it's a rivalry is because every time the Patriots did beat them, it cost a, or not every time, but it cost Peyton not a chance at the Super Bowl. And so when Peyton finally got to the Super Bowl, not only did he have to do a Broncos second half comeback, which was a cold thing, but anyways, um, he, he did that to have to beat the Patriots, and he beat the Patriots to go to his first Super Bowl, which in which he ended up winning. That's why it's considered a rivalry, in my opinion, and I think that's why it is. But like Markeem said. The Patriots did destroy them in that period of time, um, or beat them. Um, but as now far you as you had it right the first time, <laughs> but all right, I like to be, I try to be nice. Um, so Peyton, so uh, Peyton Manning is just godlike, is what I want to say. I, I love God, and I'm not trying to say that he is a god. I said, <laughs> but I'm just saying he's awesome on the field. When it comes to football, I even said this before the podcast, and I'll say it on the podcast because I'm not afraid to say it. I love Tom Brady. I have a man crush on Tom Brady. Whatever you want to say, Tom Brady is my number one like, dude, in football, like, just period, um, ever, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, probably, ever. um, so, Tom Brady is my, is my quarterback, but I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm, you can, if you want to call me biased, whatever, but I actually say that in the end, in the end, if the, if Peyton is, does what he does, and especially, if, like, he, like, what Markeem says, is able to get this team to do this both halves, that team, I said this, I said if the New England did the whole no huddle thing, that team was unbeatable if they keep it up and they're successful at it. If Peyton Manning does in the second half what he does in the first half and the second half, good gracious almighty, don't let us play Denver. <laughs> that, oh my gosh. And we killed Denver. We killed Denver in the first half. But I saw in the second half, and I'm like, oh, my God. I, you, it, it, it was getting scary, this. wasn't it? I <laughs> taped that game, and I wish I had taped myself. I had to turn off TV, everything, because I just I didn't have a way. I, I go to church on Sunday nights. That's why I missed it, so I had to record it. But I did not know who won the game. First of all, if you have never done that, that's awesome, by the way. The DVR game, you know, is already finished, and it's driving nuts. Don't uh, If you have heart attack problems, don't do it. Um, but I did that. And I watched uh, the game, and I'm watching it, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're creaming them. Oh, there's a fumble. Let's see some more points. A burglar, you know, right. <laughs> no. What? No, I live over in, in South Africa. What in the world is going on? Anyways, big rats being a job. Thank you so much. All right. So, um, you know, I'm, I just, I just I, you know, I'm watching the game, and I'm watching Peyton Manning, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's going to do this. He's going to do what we did to him all those years. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. He's going to score. He's going to score. We're only, it almost happened. And we were up by 21, and I'm freaking out. We were like, wasn't it thirty-one to seven? Quote me if I'm wrong, but like, or correct me if I'm wrong. It was, yeah, yeah it, it was. was thirty-one it was. to seven, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> thing that people do with with Brady, or they did it with Brady in the past. You cannot count this team. I'm sorry, I I doubted it for a second this year about the team in in general, but I'm 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 calling myself an idiot. No, 
you cannot count out Peyton Manning and this team. Well, I say the team, but Peyton Manning. I always called the Colts the Peyton Mannings because they were never a team. It was just about Peyton. If Peyton did it, they won. If Peyton didn't, they didn't. But regardless of that, Peyton Manning. They were down 21, and I was freaking out as a Patriot fan. I'm always, I don't know if you guys see me on Twitter, you know, my Twitter comments and on here. I am pro-Patriots. I never hate, like I said earlier in this podcast, I don't hate on my Patriots. Very rarely do I talk negative at all. But Peyton Manning is a freaking beast. He's playing. You know what? I'll even go as far as saying this. Peyton Manning continues this crap, and he does, and you know, he's able to, to, to not be horrible in the first half or anything. I'm not saying he is. But, I mean, if he's able to continue this crap, Peyton Manning is the MVP, and you might as well just wrap it up. I'm saying it. So yep. I said it, yeah, I, I and I that. would say, and he, if he continues this, I'll even, I, I'm not saying he has to win the Super Bowl, but if he continues this for the end of this season alone, just this season, I don't care if they lose the AFC Championship game by a million points. Put me on quote. I will say it at the end of the season. If he continues this, put me on record. Peyton Manning is the best quarterback ever. I said it. I love Tom Brady, but if he finishes like he did after an injury, after an injury, and I know Tom Brady came back after his injury and had a record year too. So that's why, you know. I love the man. Yeah, but it wasn't his neck. I mean, that's oh, well, right. Serious. It wasn't his neck. It was his foot. So that's what I'm saying. But Peyton Manning, which one thing to that, too, I don't think – can Peyton Manning keep doing this for the Broncos and stay healthy? I, I, I think he can because, obviously, he's a beast. So I'm not worried, but you know, you could throw that out there. But Peyton Manning is the best quarterback in, in ever. I'm saying ever. I am saying ever. I, I, I and I'm, I'm done about my Broncos or my, my no. Broncos. Oh God! Oh, <laughs> see, look, he's, look, he's being converted now. But no, no. I, I see what you're saying, Phil. But uh, I, I, I don't think Peyton Manning is the best ever. I think, uh, uh, I think he's top. Well, three. what I mean, we'll, arguably, we'll I'm better. saying that you can make that. No, I mean, he was arguably before this. Well, season, right, but so, I'm saying yeah. now the people that the doubters that say Peyton Manning is this, he's that. Well, you're a hater. It's that simple. And I and I hate. I will call myself a hater when when the Colts. If you had this podcast, t- this was take a time travel, and we're doing this podcast during the Patriot Colts uh, saga. You would have called me a Peyton hater because I hated every little inch of that man's body. Yeah, you know because he was freaking off. <laughs> now I have a brain. I'm well, not saying I didn't have a brain then, but I'm just saying I wasn't biased. I'm not biased. This is a Patriots fan who loves Tom Brady. Tom Brady will be the, my favorite quarterback of all time. But that man can't manage the game like Peyton. Uh, I've been saying for years that Peyton Manning's uh, the smartest quarterback of all time, and I think that's what this is. I think yeah. that he's not used to this. Like you know, it's like I said, he had a year layoff. He hasn't like really deciphered each team. And I said that after the week, but after yeah. halftime, yeah, you did. And then, but just like after halftime, Peyton Manning just tells himself, huh, "I figured these fuckers out," and he goes out and he does what he does. I mean, I think it just comes down to that. I think once Peyton figures you out, be careful. If you do not have, like, a four-touchdown lead, because clearly a three-touchdown lead isn't good enough. If you didn't have, like, a four-touchdown lead, be careful. Well, let me – yo, yo, I, I think that uh, – and I think a lot – well, you know, I think this kind of – and I, I hate to slight Peyton for a second, but I, I got to for a second. Before, he was such a student in the film room that he wouldn't have halves like this. Maybe he's not the student in the film room he used to be, you know what I mean? Maybe it's just like, you know, him learning as he goes now. Right. Because, you know, again, you know, and, you know, and, you know now I don't I don't know because I don't know the dude, but I just know before this was not the case. Right. You know what I mean? And I, and, and this is also a different team. But, uh, and he's come off a neck injury. I mean, you have to. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, he he was such a student in the film room. It just kind of makes me just wonder a little bit. Well, just a little bit. No, I agree. But, uh. But but you know, I just wanted to throw out John Elway is the best quarterback of all time. I'm done. Phil Montana, but anyway. It's John we've had we've had this argument before. John Elway, Dan Marino, or Peyton Manning, right? Joe Montana. That, that's your Joe Montana. Do, Joe Montana. Do, do, those, those are my three. My number one is Joe Montana until Peyton retires. All right. Yeah, um, let's. Montana. Let him say my piece. Let him say his piece. Joe Montana had an offense where ten of the eleven players went to the Hall of Fame. I'm done. All right. I'm done. I mean, I can't argue that. I can't. But I just think. All right. But All right. Hold on. There's one thing I want to say about this That's topic. Ten. Don't change ten. the it's topic. Like, it's like eight. Okay. But don't change the topic. I want to say one more thing. I, I got to remember what I was going to say now. Crap. What were you saying, Markeem? Something I wanted to say. Dang it. About Peyton. Dang it. I forgot. If I say it later, I'll have to say it. But whatever. Oh, no. That's not what it was. Whatever. Go. I forgot it. Right. That was good too. Um, it was good too. If I if I interrupt <laughs> randomly, it just I have to say something. So. I, had a, I had a topic that I, that they were talking about on first take that I wanted to add, and can I just throw it in real yeah, quick? Go ahead. Um, yeah, they sure, were go ahead. 
they they were talking about is RG three already better than Michael Vick. Um, it's too, yeah, nah, it's too it's, it's too early. No, it's, nah. no, no, it's not. Mm. Stop it. No, it's not. It's too early, <laughs> Marquise. Phil, no, no, no. Damn it, damn it. Listen, listen. All right. As a quarterback, what is your job? To not to turn the ball the over ball. and pass the ball. It's not to turn the ball over and pass. No one ever questioned Robert Griffin III's ability to pass. He's just a rookie. And, I mean, we don't know how durable he is. But in terms of his skill set, he is miles better than Michael Vick. Miles ahead of Michael Vick. Oh, I agree Vick. with that. I agree with that. Mike, Mike Vick, there's one thing Mike Vick has not been able to do his entire career. That's accurately deliver the ball from point A to point B. Your quarterback, that's your job. Robert Griffin III has already proven that he can do that better than this man. You know what I mean? Mike, Mike Vick Mike Vick will have like three weeks where he has a good passing week. Well, Robert Griffin III has done that double. So I would say yes, he is better than Michael Vick. Yeah. Can I say something? Good? I, this, I, wait, I, I, need a, I need to throw something in too. Do you think Ryan Tannehill, therefore, by that logic, oh, is better gosh. than Michael Vick? <laughs> you said Ryan Tannehill is better. Maybe as a passer, maybe. Man, seriously, maybe. It is, it is pathetic. <laughs> Like seeing him line up in the center and just hold the ball and just take hits and just fumble, and I don't want to hear, no, and he doesn't have any protection and blah, blah, blah. The motherfucker is terrible passing the ball. He is fast. He is electrifying. He cannot pass. I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of all these mother. Why do you believe in him? He, he cannot pass there. And uh, I just want to throw this stat out because I'm looking at the top leaders. There's two things I want to say. Uh, one of the things I want to say is at, of the people, and this is go, ranking them by quarterback rating, and this is not the new QBR thing they do, but ranking them by quarterback ranking, there's, guess what, the only quarterback ahead of Michael Vick in quarterback rating, uh, uh, if, if, percentage if, is less, is less, yeah. than, uh, uh, passable percentage, what am I looking for, completion percentage, whatever, is less than his, Josh Freeman. That's the number one. And number two, uh, the other guy that, um, what was I going to say? What other stuff I was gonna say? I don't know. I forgot that too. Jeez, my brain. Anyways, all I was gonna say is Michael Vick. Um, oh, Michael Vick has the same amount of interceptions as a one Ryan Fitzpatrick. No Think sense. about that. Think about uh, that. Ryan yeah. Fitzpatrick is like me out there throwing the ball. Michael Vick is just as bad. He's how many turn? Fifteen turnovers this year. And, Isn't some crazy shit like that? Yeah. We didn't have. We didn't even have way through the and season. And my friend, last, my last, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Last season, last season, Aaron Rodgers only had six picks. <laughs> Six picks the entire we we ain't even halfway through the year. This motherfucker has 15, 15 turnovers. Come on, man. Come on. Not to you know? not to mention guys that someone that got people hate or hate on a lot, and I'm just saying because it's true, because outside of his Super Bowl wins, people say he's overrated. Ben Roethlisberger has two interceptions. Think, think about that. This is Big Ben. This is big, this is and I'm his cra- QBR rating is a ninety nine point nine. This is I'm crazy with the ball, Big Ben. He has less turnovers than Mike Vick. Come on. Come on! With a horrible it, offensive line. It is line. time for him to go, and we'll get to that. But it's time for him to go. All right. And with all this, the Eagles are still going to go and win the Super Bowl. Shut the fuck. <laughs> no! Well, what, well, since we're talking about Vic, let's skip that next topic and go to the big yeah, y- Y'all, y'all want to just go yeah, with let's the go big. in and talk, to it, talk about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come go. back to the other one, and we'll just all go right. to this one. All right. Will um, Will Mike Vick Will Mike Vick and Andy Reid be there if they don't make it to the Super Bowl? Markeem, you're this. I gotta hand it to you first. All right. Do I think they'll be there? Sadly, yes, I do. Should they be there? Hell no. But I don't think I don't think that uh, especially with them paying Vick like they are, and you know he is a draw. You know, regardless of how he plays, people come to watch him play. I mean, Andy Reid, as much as I you know talk shit about the dude. You know, he's been there. He's the longest tenured head coach in the NFL. He's been there since, what, 99? Yeah, 99. And, um, I think outside you know, of Belichick, yeah. I think. No, no, he, no, he's the longest tenured. No, I'm no, saying, he's, out, he's, I mean, he's, he is yeah. the longest. I'm saying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and then it would be Belichick. Yeah, right. yeah you're right. But, um, like, uh, he, the thing is, is that well has run dry on this, on this dude. He, he made it to the Super Bowl, God bless him, and then ran into Phil's Patriots. You know, we did better than I thought. But, you know, God bless him. It happened. It's time for you to go, dude. I'm sorry. You ch- you chose you chose to run Donovan McNabb out the door. And at the time they ran and at the time they ran him out the door, I thought it was a mistake because Donovan was not half bad the season before. And then they just ran him out the door. You know what I mean? He chose he chose to run him out the door and go with this dog killer. Okay. You made you made you made your I don't, don't want to say that, but you made your <laughs> not lying it. 
he made your bed and I lie in it, man. Like, the thing is, Andy Reid, like, this, 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 the big experiment has not worked. It worked for about 12 games in total. It has not worked. It is time to move on. I feel like as long as, like, we have, and I'm going to say it, and I know y'all might disagree, whatever. I feel like in terms of both sides of the ball, we have the most talented team in football. Now, I seriously believe I that. Think you can make, except, you, yeah, you, I mean, that's why they got the dream team, by it, you know? Ex- except at quarterback. Mm-hmm. Namdi Austin has been a disappointment, too. Oh, well, well, well I won't. Oh, you make me go after Nomni right? But anyways, because I know Brian's listening to this crap. Um, I mean, yeah, I remember you. He like, said, I, "I just want to say this since we're talking about this." I'm going off topic again, and again, screw you. Um, <laughs> you got me yelling at the fans now, Marquise. Um, uh, Nomni versus for many of you that don't know, I'll just set this preface precedent. I've said before he went to the Eagles. This was before he went to the Eagles. Now I said Nomni is better than Revis, and there were stats that proved that. There were stats. I don't have them on hand with me right now because this wasn't a topic. This, you know, we're off topic. But there were stats that proved that backed me that said that I could say that Namdi was better. Now he's went to Philly and he's been different. You could say that because they, their defensive coordinator is just hard been horrible. But I'm not going to use that as an excuse. But I'm saying now, yes, Revis is better. Even even hurt. Probably. Thank thank you for bringing that up too, Phil. Go ahead. Okay, that mean I'm done. That's it. All right, all right. Uh, wait, wait. They they use. Use- Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, kid. I'll chime in for a second. Uh, the defense, uh, the Eagles' is new defensive coordinator, Todd Bowles, uh, former assistant coach for your Miami Dolphins, head coach for three games. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, okay. anyway. Um, uh, oh, and, the, and the defensive coordinator before that, people don't know this, but guess what coach he was before he was defensive coordinator? Offensive lineman. Offensive line. lineman, so don't come at me with that nom crap. Seriously? And, and it's not it's I didn't not, even – I didn't even know that. Yep. It's not it's not even like he was an offensive lineman for like another team. He was the offensive lineman for the Eagles and then they just converted him to like the defensive coordinator. I, I didn't even know. But here here's the thing. Uh he was he was the scapegoat, pretty much. Yes, yes. <laughs> he he was he was the scapegoat. It, it gave it gave Andy Reid the license to fuck up. But I love the fact that um, Homeboy, I forget his name right now, told Andy Reid after his son died, was like, hey, you know, hey, you know, we're with you. We, we feel bad for you. But your job is not safe here, dude. We need you to get it done. If you don't get it done, we may look elsewhere. It's the time to look elsewhere. Andy Reid will be a great coach for somebody else. It's not my ego. Here's like oh. a- a- after he ran Donovan McNabb out the door, him and him and some idiot fans in the fan base, whatever. I felt like the dude was, was solid his entire time there. Until he wasn't solid anymore, didn't get rid of him. He started getting hurt, and motherfuckers was calling for his head. Ridiculous. But I feel like after he did that, he I I, I give a, I can give a fuck about him now. I used to I used to call him the second best coach in the league. Now he's not even top ten to me. He's not even top fifteen. He might not even be top twenty. We got we got Lashawn McCoy back there, arguably skill wise the best running back in all of football. He don't even touch the ball. He don't, he don't touch the ball. Michael Vick. Michael Vick stands there and just holds the ball. We have a league, Michael Vick. We have we we will have a lead. Michael Vick is still passing, and we got Lashawn McCoy back there. And here's a stat for you: the game on Sunday, in the fourth quarter, uh, Lashawn McCoy had two rushes for one yard. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I'm done. Uh, he don't. He don't. We we need to get rid of both of these motherfuckers. I don't give a damn. If, I don't give a damn if we if we make the Super Bowl and lose. Get rid of them. I'm done. I'm done with Mike Vick. I'm I'm so done. I'm it, the, the even if even if, if we even get if you win the Super Bowl, if, even if, if you no, win the no, Super no, Bowl, no, he win. said if they lose. If we win, no. But if we get if we get there and Mike Vick is the reason we lose, get rid of both of them. Get rid of both of them. And, Seriously. And here's the thing: if Markeem's done, I'll go. But I'm done. Okay. I'm done. All right. So done. I'm gonna go. One thing I do want to go off on, since she said something, and I'm not really a rant, but I do want to go off on a little bit, is the fans of the Eagles. You know what? You get what you ask for you ask for little old not little old but donovan McNabb, the guy that um i don't know made you uh is the reason why you're relevant um exactly you exactly they, they, that hold on, hold on hold on hold on hold on phil they hated him i want to talk about McNabb for a second because McNabb was another one of my favorite players ever you know I'm, i'm not gonna lie towards the end of his tenure there was he declining yes he was but let me explain they, you shouldn't have ran him out the door, that's my point. But, like, they were against that dude since the day he got drafted. Yep. When they picked him number they two, I, I, I remember it like, like I was at home going nuts. The people there were booing, and I'm like, y'all all going to feel stupid. And guess what? 
Offensive Rookie of the Year, five five NFC Championship games, Super Bowl appearance, arguably a Hall of Fame career, all the Eagles passer. Y'all feel dumb now, don't you? And then and then y'all run this guy out the door. This guy who is the best player in the history of the franchise. Y'all run, that that would be the equivalent of the Patriots running Tom Brady out the door. Yep. I'm dead. I'm dead ass. Right. I'm dead ass. Is the best player ever in the history of the well, maybe Reggie White can be there a good bit of his career. But, like, one of them two, best player ever in the history of the franchise. Re- retarded to me, but go ahead, Phil. Well, and, and he basically said what the rant I was going to go off on. But anyways, which is good. But um, I, I just think, fans, you, you you booed this guy out. I said when he left, I was you know, I told my friends, I told my friend that's an Eagles fan, you will regret this. And he was sad about it. He's like, this is not the time to get rid of me now. Then Vic came around, and we all started sucking his dick. You know, Vic came around as Eagles saying, "Oh my gosh, we're gonna go to the Super Bowl like you've been before." Like, okay, he, he he had that season. He had that one season. Yeah, but this is before where, that. This he didn't. That wasn't his first season, was it? No, no, no. Like that's the first season he started when he uh, oh, right. Went crazy. But this was still everybody's like, "Oh, let's start Vic. Let's start Vic." We they were already saying, "Let's start Vic." Yeah, yeah like when so, he, we won't Vic, we won't Vic. And and let me just say, where are your booze now, fans? Where maybe I'm just not oh, paying. Oh, oh no, no, he's getting. Dude, right. You didn't see that game in the second half. Wait, right. He got booed like out of the stadium. I, I, I can't see a lot of Eagles games, so I want that, to ask that, you th- that. That that three and out, like he got booed like immediately after that shit right. was over. So at least he, the fan. All right, I want to make sure the fans were consistent. But here's my thinking on this, okay? Andy Reid, you made it. So I believe, if, quote me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is true. You made it to four straight NFC Championship games. Yep. I don't know if. Was it five and then they made it to the Super Bowl or just four of them was? It, it, it was four. And then one of the four, game. right. So one of the four was where they made it. Or was it five? No, it was four, I think. I can't anyway, remember. It's not important. Yeah. But anyway, so let's just say four. So they made it to four NFC Championship games. Couldn't get it done to go to the Super Bowl. They did it once and lost to the greatest team ever. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I had to. Of oh, the Patriots. So um, as their sound come in here, I'll try to continue to talk. But um, I just think that, uh, that with that, I mean, you have to say – that Andy Reid, people wanted him fired after that. Look, dude, he's the reason you're, like, Andy Reid, I made the argument between Donovan McNabb and Andy Reid, like you said, you had him as a great coach. You know, he, you can make the argument he was even the reason, him and McNabb and a couple other players, T.O. that year, they made it, whatever. Um, you know, they're the, that's the, you know, Andy Reid was a big part of the reason that they went to four straight. So why they wanted Andy Reid's head after that, I don't understand. But here's the thing when you're a great coach, and it's the same thing if it happened, um, with uh, with Bill Belichick, I think the same thing would honestly happen. I mean, I think Bill Belichick has earned earned it just like Andy Reid to some extent, but or, you know, Belichick has of course you know earned it more. Anyways, not about Bill Belichick. Andy Reid, you know, I think he's he earned the fact that he gets an an extra try here and there. You know, okay, we'll give you another shot. All right, so last you know this year we'll give you another shot. That was Vic's you know second year in the league. You guys were overhyped, whatever. So they're eight and eight. But this year, I honestly think, you know, the question is, will Vic and Andy Reid be there if you don't make the Super Bowl? Um, I, Andy Reid, and I think Andy Reid knows it. I don't, I will say this. I don't think Andy Reid is fired if they do not win a play. I say win a playoff game, but it may be more, more intense than that. I think they may have to make at least the NFC championship game for him to save his job because they haven't been in a long time. So they would probably keep it. He would probably give, you know, with his stature, he would get one more year, but Andy Reid I will have to say there's something that Andy Reid is doing, and I want to give him some props in this in the same sense where I do think he, he needs to go if they don't win a playoff game. Um, that's my thing, but I think he will go if they don't make it an NFC Championship game, so make sure that's clear. Um, but I think that Andy Reid is going to get some props for me because he's made, he did something. He knows this is his, this is do-or-die year. Why? Because he went out and fired. That is, I don't know if you know the stat, but Andy Reid has never fired a coach on a bye week. Never. And, and you know, I think I think the organization made him. And that might that. be true. That might be true, Marquis. You're right. But and if that's true, then my point is probably mute. But I think at least, or it, it, it maybe it's at least a nod to the organization. But whoever made the decision, whether it's organization or Andy Reid, at least Andy Reid, to a certain extent, is trying to do his is is knowing that hey, look, if I don't win, we're not. I'm gone, and I have to go find a job elsewhere. So. I need to, to do all I can. You know, let me go to management. Let me do whatever I have to do, or let me do what management says so that I look good. You know, so that I can we can win. So, in my opinion, Andy Reid, and I will throw that stat in there after a bye week. Andy Reid is undefeated. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not, uh, want to believe me, believe me. And I will next week pick them to beat the Falcons, who I love. So get ready for that. 
I, I, I don't. Mm. All right, I got the five. I'm giving Matt Ryan that type of credit. Matt Ryan's going to go nuts, yeah, well, and they're going to win. Yeah, well, they're, I'm just wanting to make sure the, the fans out there know that they were are undefeated after a bye week for Andy Reid. So I just want to say that. But I think Andy Reid needs to make the decision this week. I think he needs to. I'm sorry. They're 3-3, three and three, but I and I know it's, it's a rash decision. And I know, you know, we make the same argument, but hey, if I'm saying that you should bench Sanchez, who has proven himself um, at times, and for that team, if you, if I'm going to say you should bench Sanchez for Tebow, I'm not right if I don't say you should bench Vic. So I'm saying you should bench Vic, give Nick Foles a chance. If Vic goes out there and loses two games or he throws four interceptions, well, guess what? You got the same thing out of Vic. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. You're welcome. Thank you. And I'm done. All I'm right. Done. Um... Eagles are still going to the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, basically, uh, next topic on Embrace Debate. Um, is Geno Smith still the favorite for the Heisman? You want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm... Yeah, yeah. Um, um, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, he had a normal game on Saturday. He didn't. It's not like he had a horrible game. He got hit a bunch. You know what I mean? The, the team had a horrible day, yeah, because they can't defend anybody. But uh, he had he had a normal game. You know what I mean, is that is that enough to say he's not the favorite anymore? No, I still think he's the favorite. I just think it's not his race to lose anymore. I think there's two people right now that are seriously like se- like that can seriously win this award if they win out. Well, not if they win out. If they play well for the rest of the season. Well, one one person has to win out. The other one has to play well for the rest of the season. That's Colin Klein and Johnny Manziel from Texas A&M. Colin Klein from uh, Kansas State, Johnny Manziel from Texas A&M. Whoa, whoa, Texas whoa, whoa, whoa. Texas A&M. Come on, what? man. How you going to this uh, Tebow volume two? <laughs> Shut up. Driscoll. Driscoll ain't even the best player on that offense. Yeah, but you <laughs> said. You said they won out. I mean, I'm just saying if they went out. I mean, if they if they went out, Gillisley would win because, he, you know, if he leads the SEC in rushing. Oh, okay. And they went out. Gillisley will win. Well, I'm not saying he win, but he be there. You know what I mean, but um, Johnny Football is going nuts. That's Manziel's nickname. He's going nuts, y'all. He he had 300 yards passing and damn near 200 yards rushing against uh Louisiana Tech. And he accounted for six touchdowns. That dude is going crazy. And he did he did something similar the week before. I just think that you know to be fair, the game on Saturday was against Louisiana Tech. And the game before that, I don't. I think it was against Kentucky. Whoa, Marquine, they were ranked, by the way. Oh, yeah, Louisiana. I know. Okay. But um, who is this team that you're talking you know, about? Because I don't. Or this player? What team is he on? No, sorry. <laughs> and and okay, okay. Johnny Manziel, the quarterback. Um, the thing is though, is that they play LSU this week. I'm not gonna get into my pick. We'll do that later. But um, they play LSU this week. If he wins and he does well, he is now the front runner. Uh, he he has to win, and they have to. Do, and he has to. He has to win, and, and he has to do well. If both of those happen, he's the front runner. Colin Klein is the most valuable player in the country. If, if this was just an MVP award, he's miles ahead of everyone else. Like Because I can't name one other athlete on the Kansas State offense. He is what Eli Manning was to Ole Miss, back in the, if y'all can remember that. Well, he was the Ole Miss. This is that, that's what Colin Klein is. He is the most mentally tough dude I've seen since Tim Tebow. Like, Right now, to me, if they like, I, I, I truly believe of Oregon, Alabama, um, Oregon, Alabama, Kansas, uh, Kansas, Kansas, well, all the undefeated teams of all the undefeated teams left. To me, I think that they and are Notre Dame, the most Notre Dame, likely, Dame. Yeah, no, Notre Dame. I think they are the most likely to run in, in Oregon State and a few others, but yeah. they are the, in Florida. Wait, but Florida, the, Florida, Florida. Yeah, Florida. Florida. But I'm just saying, of all of them, they are the most likely to run the table because of this boy. Like, I'm telling you, it's, just something, it's something about this kid. Like, like, you know, I hate to sound like Skip Bayless, but his intangibles are just off the charts. Like, it was this one play, like, on um, when they were playing Oklahoma. And uh, when, when he iced the game, and he took that knee, and he looked in the stadium, he did, like, that throat slash. I was like, this kid's for real. Because <laughs> like, cause, cause like it was just quiet, and then he looked around. He did like an Undertaker type throat slash, and it was it was just like it was the most epic shit ever. And then he threw the ball in the air and just walked the fuck off the field. He didn't see celebrate with his team. He just walked off the field. I was like, that is a leader. And then and then the post game the post game joint, what he said just stuck out with me. He was like, no one picked us coming into this game. They had no idea who Kansas State is. He said he said people forget we have a very consistent coach. 
and one and a guy that's been around for years and years. If y'all don't know who we are, I bet y'all do now. Wow. <laughs> At that moment, I was like, "It is Tebow I, then." <laughs> I am sold. I am sold on this boy here. Like of of everyone in the country, you know, I don't think he's gonna be shit in the NFL because I I don't trust his mechanics. I mean, kind of like Tebow or whatever. But I do. But don't be surprised. If he gets when he gets to the NFL, there's a Tebow like yeah, there's a Tebow like <laughs> thing that happens with this boy. I'm telling you, he's special. He he's special. I'm telling I'm you, he's special. This guy, Mark. Yo, wait, Mark, Markeem, Markeem, yeah, yeah. will will you go on record saying that if Ka- if Kansas State is not ranked top two, if they're three or four in the playoff, are you going on record to go against your previous claim? No, 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 they're not. There's not a playoff this year. Big there's not a playoff. Play, play, oh. play, uh, the playoff is two years from now. Yeah. It's, it's the okay, year. Okay, okay. So, but if they weren't top two, I, I, I would just uh, yeah. I'm telling you, yeah, they they would probably be one of the top two teams. That kid is that boy is special. I'm telling you. All right. Uh, next, uh, we embrace yeah, yeah, debate. Yeah. Oh, sorry, oh, Phil. I mean, do you want no, to add I, I'll say my stuff in between, so I'm good. Yeah, all right, okay. I name I name I name my T boy T um, boy so. BCS standing. Um, a, a lot of people were pissed about the BCS standings because like, well, how's Florida number two? And, and when Oregon's ranked, this is why I don't like the college football system. Yeah, hey, and Oregon's ranked number two in the country. How's Florida number two? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Florida has played their their toughest games now. Towards the end of I'll the season. Uh, well, well. Yeah, no, they, they've done. They're done without. Well, aside from the championship. No, game. South Carolina. I mean, that's this weekend, though. Oh, but I'm just saying, like, like now is the time they they do this every year. Now is the time they play all their toughest right. games, like September and October. Look at their November schedule. I don't have it in front of me right now, but I know they play Jacksonville State. That's just an example of who they play. You know, going forward. So, you know, they, it's because they face their murderers' rule now, as I like to call it. Oregon faces there soon. Like, they got Stanford coming up. They got USC coming up. They might face USC again in the title game. You know what I mean? They got Oregon State coming up in the rivalry game. You know, it, it, it's, they have their, – their, their gauntlet is coming. So, if they went out, they'll, they'll definitely be ahead of Florida. What I expect uh, – Go ahead. No, I mean, if they went out. If, what I expect to happen is this. Unless, unless Florida wins out, then that's the national title game. Okay, oh, okay. That's what I was – okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> What I, what I expect to happen is this. No matter what, he champion will be in the national title game unless, one, unless two things happen. One, LSU has to win out. If LSU wins out and then they beat, let's say, uh, if LSU wins oh, out and, they, and then they play Florida, well, they, they, well, to win out, they would have to beat Bama. Have to be that, means they, that means they win the West. And then, uh, and then they play, let's say, Florida or, yeah, let's, play, let's say Florida or South Carolina again. Let's play. They, let's say they play them in the championship game and they beat them, and they will not play for a national title if Oregon and Notre Dame both go undefeated. If that happens, they won't. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, but that won't happen. No. So this this is irrelevant. No, but, Marky, I know, no, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. Phil, no. Phil, 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 no. Phil. Dude, dude, Marquine, listen, listen. I want what you're saying is happening because I like. Oh, no, that's what will happen. No, it Phil, won't. Listen, no, dude, Phil, dude, the be- listen, dude. Listen, you talked about listen, it. The SEC bias. Listen, no, it's not listen, happening. Listen, An SEC listen, team listen will be in the listen, championship. Listen, Garrett, put it listen, on a record. Phil, Phil, listen to me. Listen to me. This is what I'm saying. I'm saying I don't, I don't think this will happen. Let's get that straight. I'm just saying. Well, I know this that, is but how, I'm saying if that this, happens, no, they still. Phil, don't you gonna let me finish talking? You gonna let me finish talking, Phil? What What I'm saying is that. What I'm saying is that this is the only way that the SEC team will not play for a title. My point, my point is this. Notre Dame has played enough tough, op- tough opponents to play for a national title if they run the table. They have. Well, that's true. Like, that's true. Like, if they run the table. If Oregon wins the table and wins their title game, it will be impossible for an SEC team with one loss to play for a title. It won't happen. It will happen. Okay, Phil, you you don't know anything about college. No, I'm telling you. No, uh, yes, I do, but I'm because I'm telling you. I, <laughs> I'm telling you what happened last year, Marquise. Answer me what happened last year. Alabama, Phil, LSU, one. Phil, team. listen, listen, listen. Alabama, LSU. How, how many undefeated teams were there last year, Phil? Oregon State, buddy. Oregon State was undefeated. Yes. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, you talking about Oklahoma oh, State? Oklahoma State. State. Okay. And, 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 and then they had a loss. <laughs> oh, they did. They did have a loss. Iowa State. Never mind. Iowa State. That's right. All right. I'm just saying this. This it won't happen if they, if they, if if Notre Dame runs the table, and uh, if if Kansas State runs the table, can if there's more than one undefeated team, and and LSU happens to win the conference, 
It won't happen. So you're, like, they so you're saying the S, like so the SC, no matter what, if there's a one loss team in the SEC and there's two undefeated teams, they're not making it. They're not making it. But here's the thing, though. Here's I, the thing. I, just, I think that's. I don't think that'll happen. That, that feel that'll happen. But it, no, but, it should happen. I agree. But will it? I'm, t- I'm telling you, it will happen. Right, I'll, I'll agree. You more you know more it, about it than I do. But. Especially like maybe it, if it's Notre Dame, it, it possibly may not happen. But if it's Oregon and Kansas State, it, it'll happen. Oh, true, but, but you were you were talking about Notre Dame. But I'm just saying, like Notre Dame, I think it still will happen, but it's possible that it won't. Okay, as you long as you, all right, it, all right, all right. It's more it's more possible if Notre Dame runs the table than if it's uh you know, you know what I mean, like one of those teams is Notre Dame, it's more possible with them. You know what I mean, because even though they play a tougher schedule, it's not you know, it, it's it's not what Oregon, Kansas State, and what uh. You know, whatever SEC team has played, you know, it's just not. Well, and and, and let me de- let me just say, and, and Ohio State, they don't even matter because right. they can't play. For teams, and, so. and just let me say this though, um, to my point though, or not not disregarding my point of what I said, that I think that an SEC team team would probably still get in there with one loss. If should they? No, and SEC biased fans, shut up. If it's two undefeated teams at the top two, and you want your SEC one loss team in, no, shut up. I just think it will happen, but no, it shouldn't. So shut up. But 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 here here's the thing though. If an SEC team loses, it'll be late in the season, and it's hard to get back up in there right. in the BCS if you lose later. But, That's why I'm saying like it's right. It's That's all true. It's That's true. Late. I mean, well, what I'm, right. Well, what I'm saying is, you know what SEC fans will say. Hey, I, so, yeah, I, I, I know. Okay. I know. Okay. <laughs> But but I'm just saying, like, and a lot of people are mad, you know, like I was saying about that. And uh, and another thing, I, I I've been seeing that uh this this crazy thing, Notre Dame is back. But let's not go overboard, people. People are like they should be ahead of Kansas State. How? How? In what way? In what way? Imagine they beat Michigan. Congrats. <laughs> like you know, what I mean, they, they beat Michigan. They beat Stanford's a really good team. They beat Michigan, who's not very good. They beat Michigan State, who's also not very right. good. Yeah, you know? but Stanford's a really good team, and you know they and. They quote unquote beat them because a lot of people are still complaining about that. Uh, oh yeah, I heard. I didn't. I didn't see it, but I heard about it. Yeah. Phil, he didn't get it. He didn't. Try he did. Oh no. wow. They they won. Like it, it was it was fair. Oh no, I mean they won. Like Notre Dame actually won. Yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. I, thought, like, I thought you were saying that there was people were saying Notre Dame didn't get. Yeah, oh. yeah they it, he it was fair. Okay. Like he he didn't get in. Like there was no video evidence to show that he got. Oh, in. what was it? Stanford got a touchdown or something? They thought that yeah, he got yeah, a touchdown. Yeah yeah. Oh, okay. And. It was like it was like his helmet was over. You you never see the like when he you never see the ball over. Oh. You know what I mean, you see his arm, you see all this other shit, but you never see the ball. Right. <laughs> so you know it, it was just it wasn't enough. But yeah, that's all you know. That's all I want to say about the BCS. A lot of people are just mad that Florida's ahead of Oregon, and those motherfuckers that are mad know nothing about college football. Right. That's my point. Right. And it- well, I'm I'm mad. <laughs> Why? Yeah, I, I'm not mad, honestly. Okay. Um, well, I was just going to add a point here. Um, Alabama, this is going to sound like I'm so stupid, but whatever. But, wait, hold on, no, hold, hold on. on. Oh, wait a second. Everything, I, I'll let you get back to it, but everything I said about the SEC one loss, it ain't going to happen because Alabama going to beat everybody, period. So go ahead, Phil. Oh, and, <laughs> and to that, I, I have had people. Except Notre Dame. Except Notre Dame. If they, if they play, remember what I said, I kids. Say they play Notre Dame. I'm picking Notre Dame. Not picking yes. against <laughs> All right, but go ahead. But I want to say, now that you said that, I want to say something else before I say what I was going to say. I want to say to you fans out there, I love my, I love the Gamecocks, dude. I love them. But shut up. Don't try to sit there and say Alabama sucks. Like I have people saying Alabama ain't played nobody. What? They ain't beat what? nobody. They ain't doing this. Well, guess what? You're from South Carolina and you're freaking redneck. And shut up. All right. <laughs> I'm planning on my South Carolina Linians or whatever. Oh, oh, okay, okay. They kind of have a point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, they have played nobody, but they're still Bama. They're still but, Nick Saban. But but, but here's oh, here, here and is that's what thing. I was gonna say. They haven't played anybody, so maybe you yes, you could make the argument that Florida should be number one. No, no. <laughs> I, <laughs> because the reason the reason why I say that I is know, because I know though. I'm just, you know, like, I think like, you can like, make that argument. I, I, I feel no. Like Florida, the thing, the thing, Florida beat LSU. Listen, listen, listen to me, Phil. If they beat Shut South up. Carolina, you tell me they're not number one. I mean, I mean, yeah, but okay. hold, wait a second, wait a second. Well, I, I don't know. Wait a oh, second. They're number one. They beat South Carolina. <laughs> Phil, Phil, you gonna let me talk? All right, all right. Listen, listen, yeah. listen. Yeah, he, Phil. Yeah, Phil. Phil. He, Phil. He, here's the here's the thing. Here's the thing. I see what you're saying, and um, I totally get what you're saying. But the thing is that 
this is what you're supposed to do. The press doesn't do this, but this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to rank the team that has looked the most impressive this season. Right. Who has looked more impressive than Bama? Oh, that one. Oh, okay, all right, all right. You yeah. am obviously. You're true because Florida, Florida <laughs> hasn't looked that. Okay. All right, I, I give you. Like, like you know, you know, don't get me wrong. Florida's fine. You also got keeping keeping to account. See, I love that you brought. See, I love this sport. See, I, see, you got to keep into account that the tough games, aside from A and M, which you know, which showed me Florida is ready now. But the tough games they played this year, like LSU, have been at the swamp. That's true. You know, playing and Carolina so, again at the, at, at the swamp, you know. So they've kind of had they've kind of they got lucky. Out. Yeah, they yeah, that's true. Like they kind of like the scheduling has kind of you know helped them. I'm not saying they're not a great. Because I will say, and I'll talk about this the my pick later. But if that game was at home in, in Carolina, <laughs> Florida doesn't have a chance. <laughs> yeah, without question. But um, what are you laughing you know, at, Big Rat? Sorry, sorry. Some guy just came by and like uh, told me a joke. So okay. sorry about that. Right. College life, people. Right. And, and, anyway, but um, what was I saying? For kid just totally fucked me. Um, yeah, but Bama, Bama, you know, they just look so imp- they blew out Mich- like they ruined Michigan season. Yeah. Let's, be, let's be honest, they ruined their season. Like they had a lot of momentum. A lot of people thought they were gonna make some noise. I don't know why they did, but a lot of people did. I did. And, did Art Robinson, bro. And, and they, but he can't throw. But he ru- they ruined their season. They totally just ruined it. Michigan is like, they, I think they'll still play for a Big Ten title. But you know who cares? You know they're like, they, who cares? You know. Right. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, all. All right, that's it. All right. Now let's move on to the prediction aspect. Let's not go like, this is not because of our fans complaining about time. This is because Big Rat is tired and it's fucking three in the morning. Oh, but yeah. let's let's uh, let's go game by game. But like usually, usually the prediction aspect of the show takes up like 35, 40 minutes. Not to be that long. We can like. Kind of very briefly, I think us three should just give our thoughts. Snap, snap, snap. But uh, very quickly, Marquis, Seattle, San Fran. Uh, this is a hard one. I got San Fran just because he lost last week. Don't expect that to happen again. Phil? I've got uh, San Fran in this one. Seattle's not at home. Uh, I got San Fran because they just got fucking murdered, and I think they're going to be pissed. Like, yeah. I think it's a shame because I think Seattle's a really good team, and I like Russell Wilson. But I think this defense is going to make them look terrible. I, I think you're going to see ESPN headlines the rest of the week. Is Russell Wilson the answer based on how bad they make them look <laughs> in this game? Like, honestly, I think they're furious. Feel bad for them, too, because they're a good team. And if Seattle does win this game, it says a lot, folks. Just saying. It does. Yep. Uh, Phil, Jets at Patriots. As I said before, and this is going to be hard to keep this one short, but um, uh, as I said before, I, I think I think I'm on record of being the that's gonna be the first uh, YouTube bet against the fans, is it right? Yes. Right? I made a bet we'll against the fans. The fans get to decide. Are we gonna let the fans decide, or you guys want to decide? Now the fans get right, to decide. So in comment, the comments. Put in a comment what you want me to say, and like Markeem said, has to be sports related. You can. I'll even let you if you want to beat me to say I I can't say it because I'm you know. But I blank Tebow, then I'll say something. But not, I screw him, okay? So you know, keep it sports related. <laughs> but I'll say something like that relating Tebow if you want me to. What you mean? Like, I hate Tebow or something? Like no, that? I can't say that. Can't say that. I mean, but that, that's what you know, yes, that's what that's that, those uh, words that yeah. I not speak they, <laughs> they could say, they could say that you have to say Tim Tebow is statistically the worst quarterback in the NFL. Stuff like that. That's oh, right. God. Y'all, please put that in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's going to suck. Well, it doesn't matter because they're not losing. So. I've got the Patriots, and I know this is division games were close. Jets have done stuff, but you remember when the Jets got beat forty-five to three? And I know that created the can't wait uh, Bart Scott Jets that didn't make the playoffs and um, didn't win the Super Bowl and didn't even make it to the Super Bowl yet again. And where are they at now? Anyways, <laughs> that was a little Jet land. But by the way, Bart Scott can't wait to irrelevant. Um, Patriots, Damn. Patriots, uh, Jets at Patriots. Um, obviously, I've got the Patriots, and it better be a big win, and we better be up by by more than fourteen ending the game. And if Sanchez comes back and beats us, I'm done. I am done. <laughs> if it's Tebow, I will bow at his feet. But if it's Sanchez, I'm done. Marquis, uh, um, I, I I got the Patriots just because I don't trust Mark Sanchez, and and Rex Ryan gonna play him. I just don't trust him, so I, I got the Patriots. If, if, see, because I can see this, I can see the Patriots getting like a three to four touchdown lead, and I can see them putting in Tim Tim Tebow. Tebow, Yeah, that could happen. That could happen. It is. If it is close and in, that might happen. If it is close enough, I think Tim Tebow can 
can pull out the miracle because we, we always talk about it. What's the only ball that Tim Tebow can throw? The deep ball. The Patriots have one of the worst secondaries in the game right now. And let me just throw a little point in there. The two times we've played Tebow, guess who smashed him? My point is. Oh, yeah, 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 that is true. I forgot about I'm that. I'm not but scared of Tim think- Tebow. I love but the man. Again, I love Tom Brady. Tim Tebow. Tom Brady. Um, Tom Brady didn't put up forty points against Tebow. He put up forty points against the defense. That, like I said, I think he just gets them. And the Jets I think defense. Tom Brady, you think that's legit? No, I'm merely saying that. That has nothing to do. One has nothing to do with the other. Is it the I'm merely saying. Just brought up the no, defense is why. The, no, no, no. He's he's saying that's why Tom Brady was able to do that. Oh. Like, you know, like he, he, he said, you know, he's saying he doesn't know if the Jets, you know, if he's going to have that same effect on the Jets. You know what I'm saying? OK, I think it's probably unlikely that he does because Jets are division opponents. I mean, Jets probably won't let that. Ha- I think it's impossible if you're a division opponent to let that consistently happen. So not too worried about that. But uh, don't be I'm not going to hedge my bets here. I'm picking the Patriots unless Tim Tebow gets in the game and it's close. Then I'll pick the Jets. Until this, ends, until this ends, then he's got the Jets. Mark, Mark Sanchez, Mark Sanchez plays four quarters, Patriots win. Okay. Especially after the Jets, like, destroying the Colts last week. I think they're going to be able to. Oh, we were all wrong on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, the hell oh, yeah. I know the video got out late, but we were wrong. <laughs> maybe they were just, like, maybe they were just emotional, emotionally spent. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe it was just, you know. You know, I mean, Reggie Wayne can only catch you under some yard. You know? Oh, God, okay, okay. The next next game, right? Uh, Saints at Tampa Bay. God, I Mark, feel. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, um, you know, I'm gonna make a guarantee right now. Saints win this game, and I think, uh, I think they just win because they'll be coming off the high they they came off of the last time we saw them. You know what I mean? I think they win. All right. All right. So. Guess what? I get to go on a one minute rant. Ready? Remember when I said in the beginning of the season that the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Carolina Panthers had zero chance to finish second? Well, guess what? If the if the Bucks don't beat the Saints this Sunday, I will be right. I'm done. Saints no, win. No. Well, yes, I mean, they, no. They, they would have one more win than the Bucks. How, how does that They're mean? Done. They... They're done. The Bucks that makes no sense. Sweep. Yes, it does. No. Because they wouldn't even... no, 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 no. Look at this. The Bucks have to sweep the Saints to finish second. Can you hear me as I'm going slowly for you? Now, that division sucks, Phil. I, I don't know. Phil, Phil, that makes no sense. The they're, Saints not can beating, lose every, they're not beating the Falcons. The Saints, the Saints can lose every non-divisional game, and the Bucks could win every non-divisional game, and the Bucks would place ahead. It doesn't really? matter the just how many times they play One and four Bucks. Bucks. You think they're going to win? Come on, dude. The, Saint, the, Saints, are, the Saints are one and what? One and four, right? One and three? They're one and one and th- I think they're one and four. But they, I mean, they only have one win. They got the same amount of wins. Phil. That's true. But that's <laughs> true. No, listen, no, no, listen, no, 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 that's not even true. No, 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 that's not even true. The Bucks are two and four. Okay, I was wrong. I, oh, yeah, they're two yeah, and yeah. three. They're two and three. Ooh, he was missing one to put up two and four. They're two you, and three. You just, you just made my case. I know, but I, listen, listen. I'm still going. I was on record, and I'm sticking by it. I do this. I do this. I do this. I stick by my records. I don't say, oh, I've got the Patriots, but no, I've got the Seattle Seahawks. No. I said, okay, all right. God, drop it. Both of you right I now, said drop it. I said from day one, they had no chance, and this will prove my point. No. Um, I'm going to say this. If the Bucs don't play second in the division, that does not mean you were right. Oh, what? Phil. What? Oh, no, 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 no. We, no, no, no. You're not pulling that crap because you nah, said. It, 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 hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time on, time If the Saints play second, Phil was I right. I was right. Thank you. Uh-oh. Thank you. Oh, I, hold on. Hold on. I did say the Bucs. could happen. Shh. I did say the Bucks would play second, but your bet against me was that they had no chance to play second. But if the Bucks and the Saints both tie at nine and seven, and the Saints get the second, I, okay, spot I, I see the what the, I see what the kids see, saying. That's I, the that's the thing that I went on a rant for on week two about. You say that's why you say it like they have a chance because you don't you have so many odds against no, no, not being I'm wrong. I'm predicting them to be second, but if I'm wrong, your bet against me was not that they wouldn't be second. It was that they had zero chance. Like, like, oh, like, like, if, like, if they finish in a, if they finish in a tie, like, you know what right, I mean? Then y'all right, both, no, were, I, y'all right. both were right. You know right, what I mean? But I'm saying with him saying, he still, he said just now that he had the Bucks second. If the Bucks don't finish second, he's wrong there. But yes, I agree with our argument. If they are tied, then yes, I'm not. Or, or if it's like argument, one game or some shit the like argument, that. The argument, I don't know. Well, I'm just going on your record. Two games. Your record I'm was, saying it will be a difference in two games at least. Your record. Okay, your, all right. Put that, put that on the record. record. I'll say that right. Saints will be second by at change, least two games. 
will change and, the record. And by the I'm way, just... when I say two games, you, people don't look. The people don't count this. But if it's one game, but they the Saints beat the Bucks twice, that counts as two. Listen, I was merely saying again. I am picking them to be second, but your your emphatic statement was that they had no chance. And I'm right. merely saying I know. I know. That, that that's not the argument. I got to know. But, I got to understand yes. what you're saying. I'm predicting. I'm predicting uh, a Tampa Bay victory as well, though, because I think people don't. No one picked them. I, I, I'm sorry. I am picking a Tampa Bay victory. I think that. I mean, do you guys remember what the Panthers did to the Saints? I mean, this team is still. Like, I really think that Chargers win was more like a holy shit, let's get it together. I think. I still think this team is severely flawed. And, and, and remember, Sean Payton was in the crowd during that game. I, I just think that that will carry through this week. I do That's too. I, I do too. All right, I'm picking Tampa Bay. Going on the record, we'll see. Cowboys at Giants, Marquise. I hope they kill each other, but um, I got the, I got the Giants though because the Cowboys is just ass. I got the Giants. Phil, is it fitting? Is it fitting that they're that all my rants are three games in a row? <laughs> First those Jets, Pats. Then it was Saints, Tampa. Now I'm about to go on a Cowboys rant. I'm sorry. Oh, uh oh, really? Here we go. I'm watching this game. I'm watching this game, and I'm like, Ravens, this game is close. Are you serious? And I know. Late in the oh, I forgot oh, about this that. This game <laughs> is close. Are you serious, Ravens? Are you really serious right now? You should be killing this stupid, overrated Cowboys team. And then I looked on the side like, well, Cowboys are in this game. Okay, all right. Maybe I they, they heard this podcast and wanted to, you know, prove me wrong. I, obviously, they did hear my podcast. I doubt it. <laughs> oh, no, I know they did hear it. I don't think I'm that egotistical. Uh, I don't actually think they heard it, but I'm just saying, you know, maybe Dallas. I was like, I'm kind of impressed. I'm watching into this game, but we got, we actually had that game on my TV, so I'm watching into this game, and I'm like, okay, oh look at Romo, gonna get a shot to get a big win, about to suck it to all the fans. Oh look at this, and there went that. That didn't happen, cause you know why? The Cowboys did the same thing they always do. <laughs> Choking sound effects. <laughs> we, we should have like a button like the radio does. Yeah. <laughs> they choked. Oh, Dallas Cowboy fans, are you mad? Well, guess what? Dislike the video because I'm right. All right, I'm done. I got the Giants easily. Um, easily? Going with... You think it's going to be a murder? No, nah, well, I mean easily. Uh, it's going to be more easily than most division games. Okay, I got you. You got me? I'm, uh... I'm picking the Cowboys. <laughs> you, you know, you fell into that trap. Fell into the trap. Two weeks ago, too. Yep. I fell into that trap what? I said you fell into that trap a couple weeks ago, too. Last week, last week. Yeah, last week, yeah. Hey, it was close. And it had no business being close. <laughs> oh, my God. I think the Giants are going to – I think – I really think the Cowboys are going to be absolutely furious with their embarrassing losses to the Bears and the Ravens. And – I really think I just I can't explain it this season. I, I legitimately I have I, I'll be honest. I have no evidence for this. I just legitimately think the Giants are not going to do well, are not going to have a good division record. I honestly like I just I, I can't explain it. I mean, y'all don't remember. But before last year, the previous two seasons, those motherfuckers had a terrible division record. They couldn't even get wild card spots. I just I don't know. When magic doesn't strike for this team, they just perform so poorly in the division. And I think it's going to be the same. I think the Cowboys are going to sweep them. I, again, can't explain it. No evidence to explain it. It's just my gut. And, Phil, you went off your gut for the Packers, and me and Marquis thought that was a little crazy. And, hey, your gut was right. Well, no, no, so, you make good point. I have to say, you, as much as I hate the Dallas Cowboys, you're making a good point because right now, guess where the Giants are? 0-2 in the division. But, but bottom yep. line, I hope they kill each other. That's the bottom line. <laughs> you, and you hope Vic somehow dies, right? <laughs> and and if the Giants do lose this game, I think this will be my point that the Eagles will go to the playoffs because with them losing this game, they'll be 0-3 in the division, and I think it'll be fucking impossible. I will say impossible in this division to go 0-3 in the division and win the division. I'll agree with that. And I, I will the, agree with that. If they drop this game, then yeah. they're not winning the division. But I had the Eagles win the division too, so. All right, both both of uh, y'all. No, but I'm I, but I, I'm wrong now. I don't. I, I, I said that before the season. I'm not sure if the Eagles will win it. Now. But 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 kid, um, this is not gonna be quick. I'm looking at all these games we got. I'm sorry, yeah, kid. Sorry, kid. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. All right, I know. I've I fully I fully expected that. Look, I love doing the show a lot, so I don't care. And this show is long, yes. so if you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we might yeah, break I'm... three hours after we finish all these games. It's actually yeah, going all right right now. It's actually going all right. So. 
All right, so Steelers at Bengals. Uh, Phil. Um, and I put this game down because you can make an argument that it's a big game, and that's why I wanted to put it's, it on. It's, it's, a di- it's, it's a division right. game with a severely injured Ravens. Right. And it's I, pretty important. And I do want to go on quote. Look, I wrote down – we all wrote down what our opinions are of big games. If there's a big game out there that you we didn't talk about, you are free to lash us out. But – and put it in the comments. Yeah, put it in the comments, too. and you know we'll try to keep more games next time. And if you have a big game that you think we're going to miss out, feel free to tweet us. We've already talked about that before. So, anyways, uh, San Fran. Oh, that's not San Fran. What am I thinking of? Uh, <laughs> but uh, Pittsburgh and Cincy. <laughs> Pittsburgh is two and three. Phil Philip Bayless fail. Uh, Pittsburgh is two and three, and Saints are three and three. Um, I'm not Saints. Gosh, I failed again. The, I am Javin. The Bengals and the Steelers. Steelers are two and three. They just lost to the Titans after like awful injuries. Like I said last week, they had they were down to their like they had to they're almost gonna have to like play a defensive guy on offensive line. So I mean they're they're very beat up. And with if Troy, I don't I'm not sure I haven't read or anything. But if Troy, he 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 was on a Fox. I hate to cut okay. you off. But he was on Fox News, and they asked him. It was like, will you play on Sunday? He was like, the way I woke up this morning, yes, I will play. On All right, Sunday. so that's what I want to know. So if Troy plays this game, I've got Pittsburgh. Since he drops the three and four, um, if he does not play this game, I've got Cincy winning this game. So I know that's not. I mean, a I mean pick. that's that's what he said. I know yeah, that's I not. Know. I know. I mean, I'll make a pick that regardless because it's not fair to just have you know be on the fence whether he plays or not. But I just I feel like that's how he's a Ray Lewis of that team. I mean, they're different when they're not. So I'll just say since he's gonna play, I got to see. Them. Um, I got the Bengals because even if he plays, he's still gonna be hurt. Like, I got, you know, like, even he played in the Tebow game. I know it was a mile high. 250 yards. Woo! Yeah, yeah, you know, you know how Skip Bayless was. But he played in that game. He was hurt. You know, he he wasn't the same. Like, we hardly heard his name at all, you know. So, when he when he's not 100%, they're just not the same in general. And he won't be. So, I, I got the Bengals. I got A.J. Green actually having a huge game. So, oh, you, oh, oh, uh, you, I'm not going to go there. I will don't say, don't. Shut up. <laughs> I will say that, um, well, first off, I, uh, I wanted to make it a thing to go over our predictions. But uh, for those that do not know, the reason that Phil is recording at this episode, uh, actually, I don't think these two guys know uh, yeah. my laptop. I had to take my laptop to the Apple store today. Uh, yeah. The Ethernet port was jammed and they won't give it back to me for three to four days. So, like, that's why I don't have, like... I don't have a record from last week. The, I'll just I'll just put it on the record stuff. I'm writing it on my phone, and I'm just remembering to add it to the Word document when I get my laptop back. But I don't have my predictions Wait, well, from last you mean week. Apple Apple actually breaks what? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. So like I don't have our record of games from last week, but pretty much, and this I have a point to this. Pretty much from last week, we were pretty much right. We pretty much almost no upsets were picked except for me, of course. Um, Whoa, and uh, I picked te- I picked Packers. I y'all picked yeah, pick Texans. He picked Packers. He picked Packers. We were all wrong in the Colts. I think we were all wrong. I, did we all pick the Redskins? No, I picked. I'm pretty the, sure I picked the Vikings. We were. I was wrong. Redskins won. Well. I think we might have all picked the Vikings, and we might have been wrong there. But for the most part, nothing newsworthy. But next week, I promise, when I have my laptop back, I'll try to make it a point to, like, see who was right, see who was wrong. But can't do that this week. And just for the record, I'm also picking the Bengals. I just think I think they're the better team. I think they're the better team in the AFC. Not to mention they just came off a pretty embarrassing loss to the Browns. They're they're not too happy. So, yeah, I have a feeling they're going to win. All right. And, and Andy Dalton is special, too. That boy is – that's a special, special. But go ahead. Go ahead. He's special. <laughs> I like that uh, kid. I like him a lot. Next up, next up, arguably the biggest game of the week, arguably a AFC Championship game preview before last week's injuries, uh, Ravens at Texans, the only two 5-1 and one teams in the game, well, and the Falcons that are 6-0. and oh. uh, Go, Phil, start us off. Uh, I picked against this team last week, but – I just think that this is the first game without Ray Lewis. It's going to mean a lot. We talked about the whole Ray Lewis thing. I won't go into it. We've already talked about it. Just rewind. But that's why I think that I think Houston has had a game that already after losing Cushing. They're used. They're, they can they can adjust a little bit to it. And I've got Houston in this game. Plus Houston's at home and Baltimore at home. The fans have been kind of loud here recently in the last couple of games that I've seen the Ravens. So I'll have to. I'm I'm going to pick the Texans. I don't would not be shocked if it's close. It comes down to the last uh, second. Fuel or something like that, but I got the Texans. I got the Ravens because uh, Ray Rice is in the backfield. And I think it's going to be the offense that wins 
this game instead of the defense. The thing is that J.J. Watt is, like I said, MVP of the league. But I think it will come down to them giving the ball to Ray Rice and them just running right at the Texans. I believe Ray, Ray Rice will have at least 25 carries, and he'll go crazy. I, I think they win. I think they win by a, at least a touchdown. Wow. At least wow. a touchdown. Wow. wow. Uh, well, he makes a good point. Brian Cushing's out. Well, this is where we'll really see the Brian Cushing damage, I feel. True. I feel with Ray Rice, yeah. Uh, I'm going to pick – it's tough. It's really tough. I mean, they're both they're both out with fucking a huge player. Uh, I'll say the Texans just because it's at home, honestly. Like, it, it really comes down to that. It, this oh, is this right. is tough. I mean, many people had this pegged as many people say. Pe- many people say the winner of this game will win the Super Bowl. So, I mean, we'll, we'll go to the Super Bowl. So, tough game. I'm picking the Texans just because it's at home. If it was the Ravens at home, I would have just picked the Ravens, honestly. No preference. Uh, but, yeah, let's move on to uh, Lions at Bears. Marquis? Uh, I got the Lions. Um, I just think that uh, – I, I know it's another road team I'm picking. Go figure. But um, I just think that, you know, if, if they protect Stafford, I think Megatron will do well because um, – you know, he's able, I think he's kind of like, what, well, last season, did he just own them? <laughs> Something like that. And it's the first time they've seen each other this year, right? So, mm-hmm. I know last, last year he owned them, right? right. It was something crazy. I think it was them yeah. or the Packers. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think he'll go nuts. And I think they'll win. I think it'll be one of the best games of the season, though. Okay, well, um, I'm actually going on the opposite end of that. Um, I think, obviously, you heard – uh, earlier in the podcast that I got the Bears in the Super Bowl. And I think that the Bears are starting to get to that play. At, you know, beginning of the season, I was like, oh, my gosh, I picked the Bears. But beginning, now there's, it's starting to be like, oh, yes, my Bears are fun- – or not my Bears, but the Bears are – the Bears are finally doing something um, to, to credit that. Last Monday night – was it last Monday night? No, it wasn't last Monday night. But the, the last time I think Bears played because they were on by this week, uh, they played the Cowboys. Am I correct? Is that true? They played the Bear, the Cowboys on Monday night when they made Romo – well, Romo made yeah, himself yeah, yeah. do this, but they beat Romo. They blew him away. So I th- I'm not saying that they're going to they're gonna cream the Lions because, like you said, I think uh, Megatron will have a good game. Um, it's good to great game, um, which, by the way, is – right now it looks like the curse is affecting the Lions and not him. But anyways. Um, <laughs> 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 hey, he was out, he was out a week. Was it? Did he miss a game? Did he, miss, he miss a week? I don't think he did. I can't. A game. He missed week two. He missed week two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He missed. He, I'm, I'm almost positive he missed week two because of an injury. Okay. Well, I'm not saying you're not right, but all right. But week two, and I don't know if he's missed a game in, in in all of his career, so maybe it is affecting him. But I'm saying when he plays, he's a beast. So he's affecting the tight the Lions, and the Lions will probably never let a Lion player ever make it on the cover again. But anyways, so we have uh, if they don't even make the playoffs. Um, I'm not saying they won't, but I'm just saying. I, they probably won't. Um, <laughs> but I got the Bears in this, and I've got it probably by a touchdown or ten points. Yeah, I, I just think that to add one more thing, I think in this game we'll get we'll get a uh, we'll get a uh, Transformers Prime Megatron, not Movie Megatron. So, and yeah. and Forte yeah. Forte will be back and healthy, so after a bye. So. Yeah, so I think I think we won't get Movie Megatron. Now go ahead, kid. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say the Bears as well. Um, especially if Jay Cutler plays the way he's been playing, like minus the Green Bay game. I honestly think the rest of the season kind of hinges on his performance. I, I said after his loss against Green Bay, he plays like that against any team in the NFL. Any team in the NFL, and the Bears lose. Like, those numbers were just embarrassing. Like, sad. Sad, really. Couldn't and, happen uh, to a nicer guy, too. Fuck that dude. He's such yes. a dirt. He is, he is a Who? dick. Jay Jay Cutler. Yeah, that dude. That's that, I brought him up when the whole Newton thing. That, that I don't like Jay Cutler, but you know, he's the same so, one. He pouts I, too. So, but as much as I don't like the dude, I'm not going to be like some people. I, I don't remember who said this. One of analysts is like one of the most overrated quarterbacks of the past ten years. Fuck off. I think the dude's really still very quality. Oh, that, that's Michael Vick. But go ahead. <laughs> but I'm predicting. I'm predicting the Bears to win. Uh, cards at Vikings. Marquee. Um, I got the Vikings solely because they're home. No, just like the kid had <laughs> it's the uh, same shit solely because they're home. And you don't want to, I'm going to say something. I'm going to uh, give him a, I told him I'd give him credit in this, uh, 
when I said this. Um, my friend Curtis, he's an Eagles fan. I, when I usually say I'm talking about it, my friend, I usually talk about him if I'm talking about the Eagles. But um, he made a good point that I think that needed to be uh, addressed in this show. Um, he said that I think a lot of things that we're not we're not we're not understanding. And this is this has relevancy, guys. So don't freak out. But um, you know I think a lot of people are are not are disregarding, and this is coming from me where they beat us. But anyways, people are disregarding the fact that the replacement refs had somewhat of an effect on on these some of these games being closer than they should have been. Not saying that this is why the Arizona Cardinals are four and two. I'm saying that there are some games that they have that in the in the whole grand scheme of things that you can actually say well, there's one game you definitely can say that the replacement refs affected. So I'm saying I want oh, yeah. so I just want to bring that out there when I say that I think it's starting to come out. I mean I know they lost in overtime to Buffalo, but in overtime to Buffalo. Um, <laughs> so I just want to say I think it's slowly become the first two games you cannot argue the third game cannot argue. Dolphins game, you know, the Dolphins aren't as bad as people think, so you can't argue. But then they lose to the Rams 17-3. to I know I've said the Rams are are not as bad as you think, and I know it's a division game, but you lose 17-3 to to the Rams, and you lose in overtime to the Buffalo we-never-win-anything Bills. Like, really? Um, but So I, I just think that the Cardinals are not are starting to become the Cardinals. Like, we're back, guys. Uh, sorry we were 4-2, or we went 4-0. Sorry, guys. Sorry, we were four. <laughs> Sorry, we were four. No, guys, we're we're back. We're back to being our little team, and they lose to the Vikings and uh and easily. I mean, Vikings win easily, fourteen points. I'm done. I'm done, big rat. Uh, I um, uh, this is weird. This is like if I can make a slight analogy. This is like an MMA when two top ranked guys that are fighting for title contention both lose, and then they match them up together. And, like, yep. one, like, gains their momentum and the other one, like, hey, he wasn't as good as we thought. That's what I think here. I think these are two teams that, like, surprised the NFL with what well, they were doing. They're both coming off losses. And now they face them against each other. Now it's kind of like, okay, which one of you two teams was actually serious? Like, which one of you two teams will go back to top condition? I think the winner of this game will probably make the playoffs and the loser will not. I think uh, – I think it's down to that. I think like it's kind of like a leveling field. Okay, we'll see how good you two really are. We'll play you against each other. And uh, I don't know. I think it's the Cardinals. What a lot of people don't realize. If y'all don't listen to the Vinny V podcast, listen to it. I listen to it every Sunday. He goes over every game in the NFL, and it's very, very entertaining stuff. He made a good point. Like he he, he brings the numbers. Like all that's that's his thing. He brings the numbers. He said for the Cardinals that those first four weeks they did not place in the top ten in any category. Not in passing, not in rushing, not in defense, nothing. Like it's almost amazing that they were three and zero at one point. Or four and zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said like they weren't top ten in anything. So the replacement rest is a pretty good argument to understand how a team cannot be top ten in anything and still be a four and zero team. So I think the cracks are starting to show. And I also, I mean, their quarterback situation is just terrible. I'm sorry. And Cobb's hurt. I believe. I believe Skelton's starting this week. And it's just no good, honestly. But at the same time, this team last season did go 7-1 and one their last eight games. I mean, you just never know with these guys. But I'm still going to pick the Vikings as well, just out of blind, blind faith. But there's, did we all pick, did we all pick yeah. the Vikings? I think. I think. Didn't Marquine pick the Vikings? Yeah, I picked the Vikings. All right, so I, but there's one thing I want to say. If the Cardinals – and I said my point about how I think the Cardinals just kind of you know were in games and they were able to win that way. Um, I think, like you said, they didn't lead any stat, and they were four and zero. You know, that's just that show you a little red flag there. But I'm saying, if they lose this game, and this, and the Cardinals lose to four, it's fall to four and three. The Cardinals are done. They're done. You've heard it from me. They are done, and this is why. Put that on. But it's on record. Kid. If the Cardinals lose, now if they win, it's a different story. But if they lose, the Cardinals are done, and they lose. They probably finish. I'm not. No, I'm not gonna say anything about record. But they don't. Make, they don't make the playoffs with this loss. They don't make the playoffs because this is why. This would make them four and three, and then guess what? Three teams they played next: San Fran, Green Bay, at Green Bay, and at Atlanta. Three more losses, wrap them up. They have a bye week in between there, but three more losses. That would be four and seven. That team, I mean, four and six. That team's not coming back from that. You you convinced Green Bay back though? You convinced at Green at Green Bay? Yeah, but I'm just saying, man. They, they're still at, three and three. No, Green Bay, no. <laughs> Car- Cardinals do not beat Green Bay, dude. 
Hey, but the Cardinals, the Cardinals beat the Eagles. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, and one person thinks they're going to win the I'm fucking good. Super Bowl. So, <laughs> God, I they can't also, believe you. They also did beat the Patriots. It's not like they haven't beat top competition. Well, I'm not, and I'm not saying that. I'm not taking that. And, and, they, and they beat the Pagers at Foxborough. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, that's what I'm saying. As someone that, I mean, I, they, I thought they were legit when they beat us. I'm, just, I'm not saying that we lost that game. But I want to bring yeah. something up in that game that I'm not making excuses. Cardinals beat us, point blank, because they should have never fumbled the ball anyway. But if Kukowski can make a field goal in that game, the Patriots win. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, they should have never had the ball because Ryan Williams fumbled. So, 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 so you mean. So, 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 <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Okay, let's move on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. That's different. That's different. Billy Cundiff. <laughs> makes a fucking game. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay, okay. I don't want to do this tonight. I don't want to do this tonight. Let's go. They tie the game. They don't win it. Oh, God. Can we just go I'm ahead? Awesome. All right. Uh, let's go to the BCS. Uh, Gamecocks at Gators. Uh, 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 Marquine, go. I got Florida. And, um, I, you know, I hate to be the Debbie Downer, but I, I think some holes were exposed definitely against LSU. Um. Sorry, Phil. You know, it's the swamp. Toughest place to play in the country. So, well, top five at least, you know. Um, you know, they're going to give Steve Spurrier a hero's welcome. I, I'm certain of that. But they still going to, you know, the, the, the Gamecocks still going to catch hell. Uh, Connor Shaw ain't going to be able to hear shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, Florida has one of the best run defenses in the game. And, and what's South Carolina's MO? You know, Connor Shaw's going to have to make some plays throwing the ball. I'm not sure if, he, if he's going to be able to do that. And and if Gillis Lee can get it going and they just control the clock and, and, and South Carolina has to play from behind, they have no shot. So I got Florida. All right. There's two things I want to say before I make my pick and I'll make why my pick is what my pick is. The first... He's picking the game, Cox. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me finish. <laughs> the first thing I want to say is before both these games, that both South Carolina versus LSU and this game, of course, which has not happened, but the LSU games already happened. Before both these games, I said, look, South Carolina, you need to beat LSU. You're the better team. Go out there, beat LSU. Then you can worry about going to the swamp where I thought Florida was the best team. That's the first thing I want to say. So now they've lost LSU. I'm worried. I'm not I'm not going to lie. I mean, going to the swamp, uh, this was the game I said I was worried about in the first place. So it's not like I'm going to pay the Gamecocks outright. But, I mean, I do have the Gamecocks. Let's just go ahead and say that I do have the Gamecocks. But my other point I want to make is on the same aspect, I had fans – once again, I'm going after stupid Gamecock fans. Um, you know, I had Gamecock fans that told me that I have some smart ones, but they're very rare and they're hard to find. You have to kind of find them on eBay. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the the thing is, like, Gamecock fans were saying, oh, I ain't worried about Florida. LSU's the one I'm worried about. I ain't worried about Florida. Florida will be easy. Well, guess what? I hope this game is close so it scares you. I don't want them to lose, but I hope Gamecock fans, but I know they'll say, though, like, oh, we got that win. Yeah, we did. But no, <laughs> so I'm sorry, dude. Florida is legit. It's time to realize they are legit. South Carolina, quit being biased fans, okay? I love Gamecocks and everything, but come on now. But I got the Gamecocks winning because I feel like this team is different. This team is different than they usually are. There's not this isn't teams that you know that that uh, lose a big game and then go to the next game and they're like, oh well, I guess we can't be this team either. This team, I think, will be motivated to go in the swamp. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I think if they win, it'll be by a field goal. Shoot, it might be by one point. But it could be in overtime. I don't know. But I've got the game plan. The, the, the one thing that scares me, though, and I, and I do worry about this, can they block Clowney? Because Clowney, right. like – And like, that's been the, the key the, because Clowney wasn't that big of a factor in the LSU game. At, at, in the first half, he well, was. Right. second the second half, half wasn't. But, but, like, like the thing is, is that <laughs> all, all year – What the hell are you laughing at, kid? Laughing. No, I'm not laughing. I'm shivering. <laughs> oh, okay. But uh, one thing that um, Florida's had trouble with all year is uh, blocking uh, Driscoll's blind side. And the thing oh, is, boy. is that yeah, oh, exactly. Boy. And Clowney come and Clowney comes from Driscoll's blind side. I don't know side, if you guys. So. Well, obviously you didn't see because you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be uh, in my right mind to to add you guys on my Facebook. But I posted on my Facebook. I don't think I said it on Twitter, but I said, please. I said, I said a prayer on Facebook live and on in, in color, whatever. I said, dear God, please let the Patriots draft uh, David Clowney. Clowney when he comes out of college. Amen. <laughs> Yo, that dude. Real quick, real quick. Let me uh, let me let me dick ride for a second. Um, Jadavian Clowney 
has Reggie White strength, Bruce Smith's quickness, and D- Dwight Freeney's just overall speed and aggression. That dude is the best prospect. Uh, now, he needs to become a better run stopper. That'll happen. But, you know, a, a more consistent run stopper. But in terms of just causing chaos for the quarterback, that dude is like, I, I have, coming out of college, since I've been alive, hadn't seen anybody better than that. Okay, and 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 he's a sophomore, right? So you know, he he is he is scary good. Like I like to me, he is the best pro prospect in the entire country. Anybody better than Matt Barkley, better than Matt Tateo, better than Jarvis Jones, better than everyone. He is the best pro prospect in the country. And can I say this, uh, Big Rat? Are you listening? Yeah. Put this on record. I go on record and say, without a doubt, barring injury. Damian, Cl- is it Damian? How do you say his first name? Jadavia J- David- Clowney will be a number one pick in the NFL. Uh, number one, number one uh, overall. overall, yes. Mm, and I know that's hard I, because it. it I, I, I can't think of I can't think of who's going to come out the year he comes right. out. So you here's know, I mean, question, it, it's, po- it's possible. Here's another question, Markeem. Yeah. Does because he's so dominant now, does he come out early? What's- yeah, yeah, he, he's a sophomore this year. After his junior season, he's coming. No, I'm out talking about after this saying. year, his sophomore year. Yeah, I mean, it would, I mean, he can't three seasons and then you uh, no, no, no. you have to be out. Of, Sidney Rice did it, or is it changed? I mean, I mean, but he was a red shirt. Is a uh, is Clowney a red shirt? Oh, I don't know. Like, like you got to be three years out of high school. Oh, to get Sidney was a red shirt. Okay, I didn't know that. All right. Okay. Yeah, but I was know, just asking. Clown, I was just asking. I'm not saying he will. Just... Like, like the second Clowney's three years out of uh, out of high school, he's going to the NFL. Right. So and he's going to get drafted by the Patriots. <laughs> yes, because because right. because the Patriots will go two and fourteen and have the, the number yeah, one pick. Be, no, 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 no. It'll be the year after Brady. Oh, shut up! Brady will already have two more rings. He'll retire and then bam. Uh, you you really think that without Brady, that team is just gonna die? Bill Belichick is your coach. They could put John Kitna as the quarterback. <laughs> oh, we got we got to Oh, we have to save that debate for next show. This. Oh, you talking about talking about uh, the, you talking about the fact that uh, that uh, Bill Belichick made Tom yes, Brady? Yes, about that? Did. Okay, all right, all right. I, I say it not as a debate, but I say it like it's a fact. You notice that, right? right. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> but go, we'll go see, ahead. See, well, never mind. I don't. I don't. We'll deba- talk about this right, later. but I just want to say I don't say that Bill Belichick did make Tom Brady. That's not my debate. So. Okay. Well, we um, this will be like, like the Hall of Fame, the the NFL versus NCAA playoffs. That topic that we, us three have discussed for a long time that we just want to put on the show. So we'll put that on. That there. and uh, that keep this as a quote, just in case we forget that topic. And the next to- another topic I want to talk about is the top five quarterbacks in the league today. All right, five. LSU at Texas A and M. Oh my God. Um. I caught hell for this because I said it last night, and everyone around me looked at me like they wanted to just jump on me. But uh, I believe that at this point of the season, A&M has the best offense in the SEC. And for that reason, they will just flat out outscore LSU. I don't think, like, away from home, Mettenberg is going to have, going to, have to make actual reads. The A&M's defense is not very good. I'll admit that. Not, not very good. Not very good. But I think the offense is good enough to score on LSU. And because the style ball they play, they're more like, uh, you know, y'all remember that shit Mike Leach used to do at Texas Tech, the whole spread option right. where everyone's spread out and then it's just quick, quick shit. And Johnny Football is playing on a level, you know, that not many people have played at this season. I really got a and um, You know, I, I, my gut tells me, my gut tells me this will not be a close game, but I won't say that. I just I really believe A and M will beat them. I believe LSU will have two will get it three losses this year. Seriously believe oh, that. Wow. I don't have nothing to say. I don't know enough about it. <laughs> Phil. I'm ignorant, so there you go. And that's not me that's me being just telling I'm just being real with you. <laughs> All right. Um Texas Tech and Tuku. Texas Tech and Tuku. <laughs> Tuku. <laughs> Tuku Scorpio. Texas Tech Texas Tech. There's a wrestling ref- reference. Um um, it, it all depends tick. on if, uh, <laughs> tick, tick. <laughs> it, all de- <laughs> it all depends on, um, if, if what's the name's back. I, I think he, he was just suspended. So I think he's going to start this game. If so, I got TCU winning because the offensive line, they can block for days. Like it, it's, it's kind of, it's almost like it, it almost pisses you off how much time they have to throw the ball 
because because like the offensive line is just that good. Like when you watch them, they have all day to throw. And and Texas Tech mo mo all year has been getting to the quarterback. That's why Geno Smith had so much trouble. You know what I mean? The, the corners are pretty good, safeties are pretty good. But uh, the thing is getting like the thing is their front four is amazing. And you know if they can't get you know to um I forget his fucking name, but if they can't get to him, then you know it's gonna be problems. So uh, I, I got I got TCU. No comment. <laughs> uh, Kansas State and West Virginia. Like I said, I told y'all this boy Calvin, fucking Colin Klein, he is special. And I think Geno Smith will be pissed and he will go off. But I think somehow, somehow, this this special, special boy here will just, they, they'll be losing at halftime. And in the second half, like a totally different team, and Kansas State wins this game. It's all because of Klein. Klein he is he is the modern day Tim Tebow at the college level. What is he, uh, Marquise? This dude. Yeah, I, I, I'm not even sure. I don't even know. I, I didn't know anything about him until this season, to that Oklahoma game. That throat slash sold me. This boy here is special, I'm telling you. He, they will win. I don't know. I don't, don't ask the score. It'll be a high-scoring game because no one, I believe that from this point forward, put me on the record for this kid, West Virginia will not score less than 30 points for the rest of the season. Wow. Put me on, put me on the record for that. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen to Geno Smith again. Well, go, ahead, go ahead and put me on the record. I'm but, do- uh, I'm- <laughs> oh, Colin. Oh, but, uh, wow. Colin Col- Klein's a senior. Oh, okay, but that that boy is that boy is special. That's a bad man. That's a, that's a, I'm telling. That's a bad man right there. Bad, I, bad, I, I, bad I, don't, man. I don't. I don't think he's going to be anything in the NFL. But he he's just. Spe- I think his specialness is why they win the game. But you know he could back up a Kyle Orton and then you know I won't. <laughs> Steelers beware. Right. Steelers beware. Let's just say that. Alabama, Alabama and Tennessee. I think Bama will kill Tennessee, but the reason why I want to talk about this game is because I think this is the game that I, I've been hyped. Y'all know I'm, I've been high on Tennessee all year. They got so many athletes, and just for some reason, they can't bring it together. I think this will be the best effort this team puts together. All year they will not win. They will. They will. They, it's it's impossible. They ain't beating Alabama. This is not gonna happen. There's no. There's no scenario in the world where they can beat so they, Alabama. Okay. I'm sorry. That's what I was gonna ask. Uh, there's, there's no. There's no pot. I don't give a damn if if Bama barely sees the ball. They will. They will score more than them. I don't know how, but they'll do. Bama it. never has palm possession. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, they never you see know. the ball. I mean, they always run the. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I saw Bama Ten- win. Ten- Tennessee cannot win. Like it's, it just won't happen. But I do believe that this will be the game they put it all together, and they will give Alabama their greatest fight of the season. I truly believe. Like if this game goes into overtime, everybody's like, "How's in overtime?" It's because Tennessee has given these boys a fight. I'm telling you, this will be a close game that Tennessee will not. Win. I know. I agree. I agree. I think it'll be close. Stanford. Okay, good. Yeah, right, right, Rocky Top. Rocky Top is the, the, that. That is why I think it'll be close. I believe those fans don't want to see their team get embarrassed again. It'll just be it'll be an epic game. Stanford Cal. Uh too much pass rush. Uh just just too much defense, too much everything. I got Stanford, even though Cal gave Ohio State a fight and you know they, they don't they don't disappear. Like, you know, I mean they they uh they they're another team that, you know, they, they try and dominate time of possession. I just don't think it's gonna matter because it's gonna be they're gonna see a lot of three and outs because uh, their quarterback's gonna be on the ground a lot. Uh, Stanford has the the third best front seven in the country, I'd say. I, I got Stanford winning, even even though it'd be hard. It's gonna be hard to win on the road. Nunes is gonna have to make plays with his arm. You know I mean, but Steph, I I think that if well, if it's close, he's gonna have to make plays with his arm. Stephon Taylor is gonna do what he did against Notre Dame, though. Dude's gonna be, you know, that dude can play. If if they if they had a better record, we'd be talking about him in terms of the Heisman. So. I got Stanford too. Uh, Favor, actually, let me scroll down to one that's kind of not as important as the previous, as the next two: uh, Michigan and Michigan State. So you want to go, yeah, first? I'll go first? I mean, at, I'm, I'm about to just you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I uh, I follow Michigan a little bit. Obviously, you guys know I like Michigan and the Gamecocks. I like Michigan for one reason, one reason only, because that's where the greatest quarterback of all time came from. Came from. <laughs> Denard Robinson. Oh wait, wait, wait! Peyton came. That's right. Peyton went to Tennessee. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, but no, I, I, I just that's why I started following. And, no, John Elway went to shut Stanford. Up, by up. the way, that, uh, that, you know that's why. Dan Marino went to West Virginia. <laughs> by the way. But. Anyways, 
I know he went to Pittsburgh. Yeah, Pittsburgh. but um, yes, I was about to say. But uh, I mean, Fuck I just you. think that uh, that this is a good game, a big game for them. Um, I don't think Michigan. I mean, I think Michigan still has a shot to win the Big Ten, but that's not saying much. Um, the Big Ten is probably one of the weaker conferences. I might even say it's weaker than the ACC. But uh, that's probably good. Uh, now the Big East is the weakest. Okay. Oh well, yeah, that's right. I, 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 I don't right. even think about them because they don't care. Okay. Hey, exactly. Thank you. So, exactly. so that's why I guess I say that you know not to include them. So I mean, this is a big game for them. I mean, Michigan's only losses, by the way, are to Alabama and Notre Dame. Now they have they played anybody? You can make that argument too. Outside of Notre Dame and Alabama, the only team they played. But I think Michigan State, you know, is a, is a statement game for them, and I think Michigan wins this. Denard goes off, and yay. Um, Purdue is actually a really good team, and they made them like right. Nothing. So you know, maybe it was the matchup. Huh? Keep. Yeah. What's up? Can you call my name? Just keep. Just go. Just go, Martin. No, 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 no. But, no. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah, but you know, maybe it was the matchup. Who knows? But um, I feel like if uh, I forget his name right now, doesn't see the ball, and Andrew Maxwell, who's the quarterback for Michigan State, who I think is bottom five in the fucking country. This dude is terrible. Um, I believe that Michigan will win easily. I think Michigan will win either way. But I think they win easily if Andrew Maxwell throws the ball a bunch. Michigan State, deep, their defense is just totally just disappointing me. Because whenever they need to make stops, they don't. And I, 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 don't, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't trust Denard Robinson at all. But it is at the big house. And it's hard for anyone to win at the big, big house. And, and, and Denard Robinson plays out his mind at the big house most of the time. So I'm going with Michigan. But I'm not confident about that at all. Uh, your Miami Hurricanes and Florida State University. You, you, you mean your Miami Hurricanes? Um, <laughs> this is going this is going to be a slaughter. I I really believe that. I, I really. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, kid, but I really. Uh, F is you is going to slaughter them. Like I I. I I, there's no scenario I can see this being close. FSU gets after the quarterback. Yeah, I mean, and, and I love uh, what's his name, uh, Steve Morris, right? Love him. Yeah. But um, he he's gonna be on his ass a lot. And um, e- EJ Manuel, I expect him to kind of, you know, he he'll get a lot of time and he'll kind of just pick apart this uh this young secondary. I think Miami is just too young for this situation, and they will get blown out of the stadium. Especially at, like the worst, the worst thing, the worst thing that could have happened for Miami was FSU losing to NC State. That was the worst thing that could have happened for Miami. This, this is going, this is going to be a slaughter. I, I agree. They, 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 win, they win by it's at least in Miami. Touchdown. You know that, right? I, I know that, and it doesn't make much of a difference. This is Florida State. You from Florida? <laughs> you, you, no, you, you're from Florida, kid. You seen that stadium when they play each other? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter the setting. It's too. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter the setting. It's, it's Florida. You, you're from there. You should know better than that, kid. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but the the worst thing that could have happened was them knowing that they cannot play for a national title now, and they want to win the ACC, and they're clearly the best team, and Miami would just be made an example out of. I'm sorry. That's true. You want to say anything? Like We sl- we, slip- we slipped up, but that shit ain't happening again. They about well, to get killed. <laughs> all right. All right, all right. Let me just first say that. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. If you guys can't hear right now, he's just uh, sucking up on Miami. Um, well, so I'm going to keep talking a little bit. We're, let's go to, while he's uh, out a little bit, let's, uh, Markeem, go ahead and keep talking. Let's talk about Virginia Tech at Clemson while we try to get him back in the call. <laughs> what is the deal with Virginia Tech? Because sometimes they look like the worst team in the ACC. Other times they look like the best team in the ACC. I don't hold on, hold on, Mick. Right, hold I, on. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm picking Virginia Tech, Clemson since you dropped out. Um, so I don't get them because they were down twenty to zero against Duke, and I picked Duke. If y'all don't remember, they were twenty. To, uh, is it still recording? They were down, yeah, yeah, is it still, still recording? recording. They were down twenty to nothing. Oh yeah, my they were down gosh! When I saw that score. It was like forty to twenty. Yeah, 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 exactly. They scored forty unanswered points. 
You know what I mean, and, and and the thing was that I thought it was over. I you know I went and I was I was doing laundry. I was watching the episode of Green Lantern I missed from earlier this morning. I didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean, I was, I was done. And then they somehow won. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and I was like, they they scored forty on that, so I didn't see any of it. So, you know, but I I, I don't trust them. So I got Clemson, and I think that uh, what's the name? Uh, uh what's his name? Uh, him and um, no, well Sammy, Sammy that's the receiver, right? The running back. Yeah, uh, Duke, Duke, uh, Duke Ellington and uh, Sammy Watkins, two the, just in terms of speed, just as fast as anyone in next the country. Se- the I think. I don't know about that, <laughs> but uh, um, you know, just as fast as anyone in the country, and I think their speed is too much for Virginia Tech's ancient, ancient, ancient style of defense. Bud Foster, I love the dude. He's been one of the most consistent defensive coordinators in the country, but whatever he's doing is just not working. Like, it's, it's just not working. Like, we have played like shit since week one. So, I I, I got Clemson. All right, Big Red, you can go back to your Miami game. Basically, I was at the game, and I was very disheartened by our defensive performance. It was pretty pathetic, actually. Uh, my older brother was actually saying that we shouldn't punt the ball anymore because uh, field positioning doesn't matter with the Hurricanes. They're going to score anyways. And we actually got... <laughs> We got pretty lucky because they, they, they drove down the field, I think, every time. I know they missed two field goals. Uh, one time they threw a pick in the end zone. Uh, my boy, Eddie Johnson, freshman, middle linebacker. I think he's a middle linebacker. That's, uh, that's a bad, Eddie Johnson. That's a bad dude. That's a bad dude. Yeah. Yep. Kind of an amazing, amazingly well-played-out interception on the goal line, which obviously was very helpful. So, yeah, our goal line stand was pretty strong, but our defense is pretty fucking pathetic. I'm not going to lie. Stephen Morris got hurt, and they put in Ryan Williams, who made a lot of – Oh, I forgot, about, I forgot he got hurt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but Stephen Morris is playing, I believe. Philbin, uh, not Philbin, uh, Golden said he's going to do everything possible to make sure Morris plays. So I think this dude will like, fucking take a cortisone steroid shot before the game. He'll play. Uh, Ryan Williams led our two-minute – our uh, – ouch – Led our last fourth quarter drive. We were down 18-14. He made a lot of dumb mistakes. He even ate a sack, which was fucking unnecessary in that situation. And then he threw for a first. Then it was like it was like fourth and 15, and he threw the ball to I think Alan Hearns on like a on like a down and in. And it's just like why do you throw a small route like that when you need to get the first down? It made no sense. But I was very disappointed with our performance. But with that said, I think we're going to lose, but I think we're going to lose decently respectable. I can't remember the last time FSU blew us out of the stadium. Honestly. We'll get, like, we'll get ready. We'll in, the get past ready. Ten, in the past <laughs> 10 years, in the past 10 years, it's either we win or they beat us by less than a touchdown. We've but, killed them. But well, yeah, like, yeah well, I, I agree. But this is like the one, this is the one year where FSU is that much better. Usually they're, right. usually they're about the same. Like FSU is just better in every aspect of the game. I can't wait to yell at you next week on first take for not giving my Hurricanes enough credit. Yeah, when they lose by 30, you go, <laughs> you go like. <laughs> but you also have to realize the Hurricanes also have a loss to UNC, although it doesn't really matter because UNC can't play for the ACC championship. But uh, UM understands that if they lose this game, they can't play for the title either. It's They fully understand that. Yeah, but I don't, I mean, think, that, I don't think that matters. I think talent is what's going to just kill them. All right, fine. We'll see. But in, in any case, that is it for us this week on First Take. Thank you all for who stayed along. I mean, I have no idea how long this was, but it had to have been at least two and a half hours. Easy. Yep. Uh, thank you all that decided to 